God bless you on YouTube tonight. Yes, we got YouTube set up. Blessings, everyone. Apostle Carmen Haywood. Instagram, we got Instagram Live set up. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings to each and every one of you on tonight. God bless you. God bless you. It is a night of prophetic surge empowerment. You see me looking here, Instagram Live. You see me looking here, we on YouTube. If you see me looking in the middle, I am looking at Facebook Live. And so, you know, I'm just believing God tonight for miracle signs and wonders. Amen. The Lord said in his word, he said, miracle signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. So all you got to do is believe tonight. That's it. All you got to do is believe. God bless you, Dominique. God bless you, Linda. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Apostle Carmen Haywood. I am the proud pastor of PIPW Ministry, and we are located here in Raleigh, North Carolina. So if you see me looking here, I'm looking at different devices, Instagram. I may come back over here. I may come over here, and I may look in the middle. So I got three devices up right now. Okay, so y'all bear with me. Stay with me as long as you can tonight. This is a night of prophetic surge empowerment. Blessings to you all. Hello, hello, hello. I am excited to be back on Facebook Live. I am excited to be here tonight. And I just want to say to Facebook, I do not own the rights to the music that is playing in the background. Amen. So this is not my music. So Facebook, please do not flag my video. <laughs> All right. But we are here. We are here. We are here. Dominique already says I'm expecting a move of God tonight. We were so blessed on last week. So blessed. So blessed. So blessed. So blessed on last week. Um, the Lord truly, truly, truly blessed us on last week, you know, when we were on live. So God bless you all. Thank you for the greetings. I can see you all saying good evening. I can see you all saying blessings. Apostle, God bless each and every one of you on tonight. Click that share button, if you will. Hit it a couple times, okay? Listen, tag a few people into the broadcast if you can. God is up to something great on tonight. And I just want to share um, just a, a praise report, and then I want to share a testimony, all right? So I got a praise report first, and then I got a testimony, all right? It's all going to tie in, I promise you, amen? Um, and so I just want to encourage the body of Christ on tonight. I want to encourage the fivefold ministry, every apostle, every prophet, every pastor, every teacher, every evangelist in the body of Christ, amen? I want to encourage you tonight, amen, to stand strong. Glory to God. I want to encourage. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Prophet Darrell. God bless you, man of God. Yes, yes, yes. I want to encourage the, the fivefold ministry, each and every one of you. I love you, Mom Cynthia. I love you. I love you. God bless you tonight. Yes, I want to encourage the fivefold. Listen, we are getting ready to see a revival like never before. And, and the fivefold ministry has to really, really, really anchor down now and really get in a place with God. To where we hear him clearly for the people. Now, I know some of you might say, well, I'm a prophet and I hear God. I get that part. Some of you might say, I'm a pastor and I hear God. I get that part. Some of you might say, I'm an apostle. I hear God. I get that part. Some of you might say, I'm an evangelist. I hear God. I get that part. Amen. But God is saying, God bless you, evangelist. Thank you. I'm going to pin that down there. God is saying, even now, make sure that your ear is inclined to his voice. Make sure that you are hearing God like never before, because he's getting ready to speak through dreams. For some of you, God is getting ready to speak directly to you. And so it's very important that you have your ear inclined to his voice. Very important, very important prophets, because the father is getting ready to speak to us in a way that he's never spoken to us before. And so I want to encourage the body of Christ. Listen, this is not time to play, but it's time to pray. Do you hear me? It's not time to play, but it's time to pray. I, I got to say it as God has given it to me. Leaders in the body of Christ. Listen, you got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Keep your armor on. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage the body of Christ first before I release the word to his people, to God's people. Amen. Keep your armor on. If you see a witch, it's a witch. If you see a warlock, it's a warlock. Stop playing footsies with the devil. Come on. Come on, you got the wrong people in your life. Evict them out now. Get rid of the trash. <laughs> come on, come on. If you got to make some moves, make some power moves. If you got to shift, you better shift. Come on, if you got to relocate, you better relocate. Whatever the Father is telling you to do, you better do it. Hallelujah, because time is winding up, church. Hallelujah, we don't have as much time as we think we do. But 
true revival is getting ready to come. Amen. God bless you, Evangelist. She said, let me get my seed in the ground early. We ain't even taking up offering yet. <laughs> and the woman of God said, let me sow now. Let me sow now. That's right, Minister Hattie. Your life depends on it. Amen. So I just wanted to encourage the body of Christ before we dive into the word tonight. But I do want to say this, amen, that it's reaping season. It is reaping season. And I have to share this, this praise report with you all. So some of you know, I went to Jamaica and um, with my with my travel business, Surge 365. And, you know, it was a business slash vacation trip. So half of it was va vacation and the other half was business, right? So anytime you're a travel agent, and I don't know who this is for, but some of y'all might want to be a travel agent. But when you are a travel agent, amen, then you have certain training and you have to go the distance. You got to go the mile to get your training. Your training is not in your backyard. OK, when you become a business owner, sometimes you have to go to the extent and sometimes God bless you all. God bless you all. Those that are greeting me, you have to go to the extent when you are a business owner. A business is not just a nine to five. OK, so with that being said, you have to treat your business as such. You may have to go to business conferences. You may have to invest in your business. You may have to spend, you know, money that you really didn't want to. But in the end, it's going to pay off. OK, so we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. So I thank God because as we were in Jamaica, um, some of you know, I shared the story about the man that was following me around Jamaica the day I got there and all that. Then the next day he was following me again. I'm not sharing that story tonight. What I'm sharing tonight is the fact that I have found out. God bless you, Sister Joy. I see y'all sewing. Jesus, have mercy. What is going on here tonight? Jesus, have mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm saying Jesus have mercy because y'all must be catching on to something that uh, it must be in the atmosphere. <laughs> Hallelujah. That giving spirit must be in the atmosphere. The spirit of the Lord must be unctioning some of you to go ahead and sow your seed early. I know that's right. So I thank God because when I went to check in to Jamaica into my room, I got there and I got there safe. Praise God. And uh, when I went to check in, um, they couldn't find my name at first. And so because they couldn't find my name, God bless you all on Instagram, because they couldn't find my name, I had, um, I was just standing there waiting, you know, so I was like, I know I paid for my room, you know, come on, I know everything is totally paid for now, I got my invoice and, you know, I got my paid, you know, email, so I'm like, listen, I'm in Jamaica, I need a room, and sure enough, they were like, Miss Haywood, we are about to upgrade you to a swim up suite. And I was like, are y'all sure? Because that's not what I paid for. <laughs> and they were like, we get ready to upgrade you, right? I'm sharing this because I got on a business call. I got on our business Zoom today with the CEO and the president. We have accountability calls. And that's another thing. You have to be accountable in your business. I'm going somewhere. I'm giving y'all little nuggets as I'm sharing my story, okay? As a business owner, you have to learn to be accountable. You can't be in business and not accountable to leadership. You have to be accountable. To, oh, y'all not ready. I know. Can I, y'all want me to slow down? Is this too much for some of y'all? Is this, is this too much? Do I need to slow down? Do I need to, what y'all want me to do? Y'all want me to just go along with the prayer and, the, you know, start speaking in tongues and tell you what scripture we turn into or y'all want me to stay right here? Oh, she said yes. Okay. All right. What about Facebook? Okay, she says, speak apostle. Okay, so we on to something. All right. I just want to make sure I didn't lose nobody now. I know what I feel in the realm of the spirit. So I just want to make sure y'all with me. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go. And so, all right, Tia says, stay right there. So when, you, when you're in a business, you have a business. Like I said, it's not a nine to five. It's a serious thing because your business can take off, right? Your business can take off in a year. Ask me how I know. Your business could take off in two years, but see, it's what you do now that's going to pay off later. I'm already in my message. It's what you do now that would definitely pay off later. This is why people who have children, who have grandchildren, they start a business because they want to leave a legacy, right? And so leaving a legacy means that you're going to do something now, this year in 2023, that by the time 10 years goes by, you done earned what you need to earn. You done made the money you need to make. You done brought the people in. You done formulated a business. You done formulated a team within your business, right? 
You're receiving residual income, passive income. You got money coming in from all different types of streams. Come on. Because God promised the church. He promised us two years ago. He said there's going to come a time where we're going to tap into multiple streams of income. Some of you caught it and some of you didn't. But it's not too late. So I went to check into my room. And sure enough, they upgraded me. Well, today... As I was on the accountability call with the president and the CEO of the company, I began to share my story and they stopped me immediately. They said, Apostle Carmen, they said, we upgraded your room to the swim up suite. I said, y'all did that? <laughs> and they said, yes. They said, for your leadership and for your servitude in the business. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> they were like, you a phenomenal leader. So we... I know, because I, I, I see y'all hitting those hearts. That's how I felt. I was like, huh? They said, oh, we did that. We did that. We did that. <laughs> My mouth hit the floor, y'all. I, I was so shocked for the rest of the call. I was like, oh, my goodness. And the Holy Spirit, y'all know the Holy Spirit spoke to me, right? So I'm going to give it to y'all. It's fresh off the press. Y'all getting it firsthand. Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you deserve it. That's it. You, you, Sister Ty, see, y'all gonna help me preach this. Y'all, I love my church. Listen, <laughs> the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you deserve it. And then he told me, he said, go back to the video that you posted when you was in Jamaica. And I'm like, go back. So I go back to my Facebook page and sure enough, the title of the live was you deserve it. Not even knowing that the company had went before before me and pretty much paved the way, I'm going somewhere. Because what you do now, hallelujah, hallelujah, it's going to pay off later. But see, it blessed me in such a way, Minister Tanya, I see y'all hitting those hearts. It blessed me in such a way because I'm the one that's usually surprising people. <laughs> Listen, five of y'all going to catch it in a minute. I'm the one that's usually blessing people. I'm the one that's, you know, trying to wow people. And, you know, because of their accomplishments and the things that they do unselfishly. Glory to God. So I'm usually the one that's sitting in the back and I'm watching different people. And I'm saying, you know what, God? Give me the finances to bless that person. You know what, God? What gift should I get that person? Come on. Hallelujah. What should I bless that person with for their birthday? Come on. So I'm usually the one that is the giver. But for somebody to sit back, whoo, hallelujah, and, and begin to look at me. See, now you're helping me preach, Sister Ty. Get off of this live. Because now you in my message that I got written right here. D don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't. <laughs> listen, listen, last, just, listen, yesterday, amen, one of my members helped me preach, helped me pray. They helped me prophesy. Listen, I was like, you know what? Y'all so in the vein. Hallelujah. I said, but I thank God for it because for you all to be in the vein with the prophet, that's a blessing. That's a blessing because that means you are in tune with God. Ha, shake, yanamasake, glory to God. That means you are in tune with God to where the prophet begins to speak. Sometimes you already know what the prophet is getting ready to say before the prophet says it. Come on here. That's just like God. Hallelujah. Because we're so in tune with him. Come on, leaders. Come on, leaders. Where's the fivefold ministry tonight? I'm coming to get you tonight. It's all right. Hallelujah. Because some of you got ministries, but now you need an impartation. Mm. Hallelujah. Some of you are pastors and you need an impartation. Some of you are prophets and you need an impartation. Glory to God. Now is the time for somebody that you don't know. Glory to God to be able to pour back into you. My God. In the name of Jesus. Just like, mm, hallelujah. Just like this company that I joined just a year ago took the time to pour back into me by giving me an upgrade on my room. So I remember when I looked at the upgrade, now I paid 1600 for my room and that my, my initial room was 1600. Now, if it would have been split between two people, that would have been $800, right? But I travel alone and I stay by myself. That's just me. <laughs> that, that's just the profit in me. Amen. Till my husband come to God be the glory. Amen. And so I said, okay, let me pay my $1,600. But what I love about it is this, the upgrade was an extra thousand dollars, actually over a thousand dollars. That room was about 2,800. It was about $2,800. 
I don't think y'all hear me. That's close to $3,000. And I begin to say, Lord, I thank you. He said, daughter, you deserve it. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. So I want to speak to the givers tonight. Ah, hallelujah. I want to, I want to, I want to encourage and prophesy to the givers tonight. It's your reaping season. It's your time to reap. You're getting ready to reap a harvest mm, that you've been sowing for, for a long, 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 long time. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what I know. God told me to tell you every seed that you have planted. Hallelujah. Into good soil. The father says you are about to reap for what you have sown. My God, I see Sister Kashina on tonight. I can't tell her testimony the way she can tell it. Hey, remember, she sent me. You, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. But just know the Lord is opening major doors for her. Hallelujah. He heard her cry and he heard her prayer. But most of all, her obedience to him. Hallelujah. Has unlocked some doors. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That no man can shut. Sister Kashina, glory to God. So now you, hallelujah, have to be the one to step out on faith and walk through those doors, say of God. I feel the glory of God tonight. Hallelujah. I said, I feel, hallelujah, the glory of God tonight. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The body of Christ needs to be encouraged. So can you please take the time to share? Listen, you know people that I don't know. You can reach people that I can't reach. Hallelujah. So go ahead on on and tag somebody. Put somebody's name in the broadcast. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, share this broadcast. Hallelujah. A couple of times. Listen, if you don't want this video on your timeline, then maybe you shouldn't be here. I'm just being honest and I'm being real tonight. Amen. Because if you don't like me, then maybe you shouldn't be hearing anything that I got to say. Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But I love you. I still love you. Amen. And I thank God for you. Even though you might not thank God for me, I thank God for you. Hallelujah. Because how many of you know God has a way, amen, of talking to his people. God has a way of getting his people's attention also. And that's what the father is doing. So the prophet that is in your life, you don't even have to know them personally. Amen. But God can speak through them. And that's what the father is doing. This is why the Bible says he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. All you got to do is have one ear to hear what God is saying unto you. If you are the church, then all you got to do is open your ear and let the father speak to you. But the truth of the matter is this. Now I'm going to ruffle some feathers in just a minute. But after the Lord ruffle your feathers, just say, God, I need you to fix it. Okay. It's all right. Sometimes your feathers get ruffled. All right. L let me just help about five of you out right here. Listen, some of you are really not hearing God. You think you're hearing God, but you're not. You're hearing yourself. You're hearing that inner voice that is inside of you. Now, you better be careful because if you do what your inner voice is telling you to do, you're going to mess up. This is why you need a prophet in your life. I've been saying it for the last three to four months. And a lot of people got mad at me and I caught a lot of flack from it. People in my inbox, oh, how you telling people to listen to the prophet? They need to listen to God. Well, the truth of the matter is this. Some of you, your ear is not incl inclined to God. Some of you is like spiritual wax in your ear. We just going to tell the truth and shame the devil. Come on, because when you are in sin and when you got weights on you, let me tell you something. It's hard to hear from God. It's hard to hear from God. If you got the wrong people in your ear, it's hard to hear from God. I don't care how you fake it. I don't care how you fake it. Try to make it all that, all them cliches. And I'm going to take two steps and God going to take three. That's a bunch of foolishness. Okay, no, the devil is going to run circles around your head. And what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself in a place that you really don't want to be in. And then it's going to take the prophet, hey, Shatan Baha, hallelujah, to, to speak you out of that place. It's going to take the prophet, glory to God, to speak you out of that dark place. See, so you just need to listen the first time. Amen. I see my mother on, amen, my spiritual mother. Cynthia Banks, let me tell you something. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The church that she's a part of and the pastor that she sits under was my former pastor. Amen. Before my other pastor. But let me just share this. Amen. When you have a leader and she has a powerful dynamic leader. Oh, Pastor Lupton is amazing. Let me tell you something. Amen. I don't come from bad stock. Okay. But I learned to be obedient to God. I'm sharing this because she's here. But let me tell you something. She listens to the prophet that is in her life which is her pastor. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. When, when you have another voice that is in your ear, 
that voice has to be saying the same thing that your pastor is saying. If not, you better run like Forrest Gump. You better take flight. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I just said a mouthful right there. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Glory to God. Listen. Ah, Glory to God. You better be very careful because the prophets, we are speaking the same thing. Listen, it amazes me when I release a word, I release this word tonight, then I go on Facebook live tomorrow sometime and I'm scrolling up and I'm just listening and I'm seeing different prophets and they saying the same thing. I'm like, come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, God. Hallelujah. Speak to your people. Glory to God. Hey, hi, Yabashe. Glory to God. Get your people back in a place of obedience to you so that they can receive from you. Because see, the true prophets, we're speaking the same thing. Follow God. Be obedient to God. And if he's not speaking to you, you better listen to the prophet that is in your life. You ain't got time to play. You ain't got time <laughs> to, to be picking flowers. You know, as the mothers of the church used to say, baby, you saved now. You ain't got time to be picking flowers. See, some of the saints, y'all think y'all got time to be picking flowers. No, you better, listen, if you're going to pick a flower, just pick one, smell it, and keep on going. You ain't got time to be sitting there talking about, oh, that's a beautiful garden. Oh, I wish I could just sit here and just smell the roses. Are you serious? Then here come the devil. Here come the enemy trying to snatch your kids. Here come the, oh, y'all not ready. Here come the devil playing mind games. Come on, because all it takes, hallelujah, is a few seconds Listen, the enemy cannot hit a moving target. I just said something right there. See, the enemy, oh God. Hey, Shatanda Baha. This is why I don't understand people that stay in the same place all the time. And when I say that, meaning you just stuck. If you stay stuck in a stuck place, the enemy knows where you are. He know where to find you in the morning. He know where to find you in the afternoon. He know where to find you at nighttime. Come on, because you just, come on, Whitney, you caught that, right? You're in the same place, naturally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Get out of that place. Get out of that place. But what, yes, Lord, I hear you. But what depression does, hey, shatan da baha, or we coming for the devil tonight. We coming for the enemy tonight. What depression does is depression will make you stay in the same place for a period of time. And when you can't move, you feel paralyzed. You're trying to get it together. You're trying to figure things out. But depression weighs on you. Ah, you don't want to talk. You don't want to change your clothes. You don't want to shower. You don't want to wash your face. Come on here. Depression. Hey, shatan da baha. It is serious. And you can't play with that. So God sends a prophet to say, get up. Hey, shatan da baha. Hallelujah. God sends, hey, shatan da baha. I felt that in the spirit. God sends his prophet to say, now get up. Get up. Get up. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke to the lame man that was at the side of the pool of Bethesda. He was there for 38 long years. Can somebody just write in the comment long years? He was there at the pool of mercy. Bethesda means mercy. Hallelujah. He was there at the side of that pool. My God. And Jesus, hey, shatan da baha. Jesus asked him, will thou be made whole? Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you ready? Ah, glory to God to be completely healed. Because that man was at the side of the pool. And guess what? He witnessed people being healed. He saw people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, now, now y'all going to make me break it down. I thought, hey, amen, I ain't have to break it down. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, glory to God. Hallelujah. That the angel had stepped into the water. Mm, glory to God. At a certain season, my Lord. Hallelujah. At a certain season and at a certain time. Mm, hallelujah. The angel stepped into the water. And the Bible says, glory to God. Those who stepped in were instantly healed. See, you got to want it bad enough. <laughs> Glory to God. But see, the man that was at the side of the pool, let me tell you something. He watched people being healed. Come on, that's just like many of you. You watching people getting their deliverance. You seeing people be blessed. The devil is a liar. Come on, you're going to lose that spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Listen, your time is now for you to get up. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. See, but Jesus had to come, Sister Sophia, and Jesus healed him a totally different way than he healed everybody else. Because see, the people, they knew that when the angel was in the water, all they had to do was just step in. 
when the, when the angel had troubled the water. Now, hallelujah. Let me just give you the, let me give you the revelation of that. Some people get it, Sister Latanya, and some people don't. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Listen, you wouldn't have had to tell me three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten times that, that when the angel steps down, all I got to do is just put my toe in there. Hold on. All I got to do is put my foot in the water. Wait a minute. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and jump in this water. I took a dive. <laughs> they had have been like, well, save us some water because everything would have just splashed, you know? I'm just saying. Come on here. You got to want it bad enough. Woo, how bad do you want your healing? Come on, aren't you tired of being depressed, sitting there all day long? You ain't got nothing to do. When there's so much that needs to be done. Woo, hallelujah. Time is just going by. When God says, and I will restore unto you the years. Hey, shatan nabaha. But see, that's for those of us that's been working and the devil tried to take our stuff. See, God said, and I will restore unto you the years. Hallelujah. That means you've been faithful. Glory to God. And over those years that the devil was tampering with your stuff, God says, I'm going to give it back to you. That ain't for the lazy folk. Hey, shatan nabaha. Glory to the Lamb of God. The restoration ain't for lazy folk. I'm getting in trouble. I'm getting in trouble. I'm, I'm getting in trouble. But it's good trouble. Can somebody hashtag good trouble? When God say he going to restore, that's not for the lazy folk. That's not for those of you that just sit back and don't do nothing. You ain't serving God. You ain't loving God. You ain't worshiping God. Somebody got to tell you to worship. Somebody got to tell. Oh, y'all not ready. Mm -mm. Do you love him? Because <laughs> if you love him, you'll serve him. Hey, hallelujah. Do you love him? Because if you love him, you'll realize how much you need him. Hey, hallelujah. Do you love God? Come on here. Because see, that man that was at the side of the pool, he didn't know what was really going on. He just saw people getting healed. He just saw people getting delivered. He, he just saw miracle signs and wonders, but he thought that it wasn't going to happen for him. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm coming for somebody tonight. Hallelujah. You see everybody else being blessed. Everybody else's marriage is going good. And here your marriage is on the rocks. And here you about to face a divorce. Come on, somebody. Here you done met somebody and you thinking he the one. Oh, my God. And you realize he ain't the one. Come on. Hallelujah. It's some men on here. You done met a lady and you feel like she's the one. And God revealing to you she ain't the one. You got to wait. So now you like, okay, God. I thought my time was getting ready to come. That's just like that man that was at the side of the pool. Come on here. And Jesus went to him. He said, will thou be made whole? Will thou be healed? And the man began to make the excuse. Y'all know the Bible. Come on, you know the scripture. He began to make the excuse. I need y'all to share this broadcast. Go ahead and click that share button one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture said that the man began to make an excuse. Jesus, have mercy. My Lord. God says, no more excuses in this season. It's a new year. We done stepped over into 2023. You still got the same excuse from 2022. You still saying the same stuff? <laughs> really? You got the same, same lame excuse at that. Oh, I can't do this because I can't do that because I'm just waiting on the Lord. Well, guess what? He's waiting on you. God is waiting on many of you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's waiting on you. Oh, God, have mercy tonight. Hallelujah. God is, hey, shatan nabaha. He's, he's pulling some of you out of that pit you're in. And some of you is self-pity. I hear you, God. It's self-pity. See, the man that was at the side of the pool, he started making excuses. Jesus said, will you be healed now? You know it's your time, right? You, you know. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Anytime Jesus shows up, he said, you, you know it's your time, right? See, sometimes we think, yes, Lord, I hear you. We're going to get back to the man at the side of the pool and his excuse in a minute. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that there are many of you that have pity parties and you believe that things are supposed to happen when you want it to happen. It's still in God's timing, but you still have to be obedient. Jesus, have mercy. So the man at the side of the pool, Jesus asked him, will thou be made whole? And he told Jesus, he said, listen. When the water is troubled, the angel was stirring up the water. He said, I have nobody. I have nobody to put me in. Hmm. Ain't nobody there. I'm by myself, Jesus. 
Come on, that's just like some of you. I can't make it to church. I need somebody to take me. The devil is a liar. I can't get to the house of God. Why not? You get every you 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 can get to everywhere else. <laughs> you could do everything. I ain't got it to give this week, Lord. Well, He's the one that bless you with the job. He's the one that put the little fifty dollars in your pocket. You can't sow five off of that. <laughs> he says, "Okay, well, I'm gonna hold back on another fifty. Then you can't even be faithful over fifty dollars." Say la, we're gonna pause right there for a minute. Ah, but you want the riches and the blessings and the overflow and the increase and the restoration. <laughs> Come on, Jesus, have mercy. Woo, God, God is rescuing somebody tonight. Hey, Shatan Nabaha. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. God said he's coming for you even if you don't want him to come for you. He's coming for you tonight. Hey, because the time is now. The time is now. So the man at the side of the pool, what he said? I ain't got nobody, Jesus, to put me in the water when the water is troubled. He said, okay, take up your bed and walk. We're we going to do this a little bit different because because you're so used to making excuses. So so let, let, let's, hey, Shatan Nabaha, let's do it this way. Take up your comfortable place. Ooh, I feel deliverance right here. Take up your comfortable place and walk. The man like, wait a minute. I haven't walked in 38 years. What were you talking about? Wait, wait a minute. Get up off of this mat that I've been laying on. What? Huh? <laughs> the comfortable place that I've been in for all this time. I know everybody and everybody knows me. Huh? You, you, wait a minute. So you telling me to do something that I've never done before? You telling me to go somewhere I've never gone before? You, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. You want me, Jesus, to come out of my comfortable place, my hometown, and go somewhere totally different, and you going to restore me there? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> see, now I'm in my own testimony, because see, God uprooted me. Hallelujah from Philadelphia. Glory to God. It took me to Raleigh. And I'm here now. It'll be almost three years since I obeyed God. And I can truly say he has restored me. Greater than I could ever think or imagine. Hallelujah. I give God praise. Hallelujah. And Brina says, wow, confirmation. Come on. God bless you, daughter Chanel, tonight. Listen, listen. My life will never be the same. Ah, glory to God. And that's just like many of you. God says it's time to get up. Hallelujah. Because if I stayed in my comfortable place, don't get me wrong. I love my hometown. I go back. I'm going this weekend for a cheesesteak. <laughs> I'm going for some other things, some ministry, ministry stuff. But I'm just saying, I got to get me a cheesesteak. I got to get a Philly pretzel. I got to get a Reader's Water Ice. I got to get, because y'all ain't got all that here in North Carolina. I'm just saying. <laughs> Let me cut up a little bit. Sister Ty said, Apostle, you cutting up. Let me let me cut up just a little bit more. But guess what? When I go back, hey, I'm not thinking about staying. All right, all right, mother. Yeah, she said, call me. Yeah, you you going yeah, I'm, I'm gonna call you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I sure will. Soon as I get off that plane. <laughs> yes. Listen. Listen, I'm going to go do what I need to do, and I'm on my way back. Do you hear me? Hallelujah. Do you hear me? And I'm sharing that because I want to encourage those of you who God is about to relocate. Ah, glory to God. Listen, don't cry. What you crying for? You about to see, ah, you're about to see what you've never saw before. You are about to experience God. Hallelujah. You about to experience God in a way that you've never experienced him before. Woo, you about to meet some people. Hey, hallelujah, that you never met before. You about to make some income. Hey, shatan and receive some money. Glory to God that you never, ever, ever seen before. Sometimes, glory to God, you got to be like Abraham. When God said, I'm going to take you to the land. I'm going to show you the land first. That's flowing with milk and honey. Oh, 
God is shifting us tonight because he's rescuing some of you. Listen, hallelujah. It's time to get up. I hear you, God. And some of you, hey, shatan the Baha'i. It's three of you need to get up off your butt. I got to say it just like how God telling me to say it. You know that thing you sitting on? You got to get up from that. God say, get up. Get up. It's time to get up. Hallelujah. It's time to get up. And sometimes when you get up, hey, hallelujah, you see things totally different. Woo! Can you imagine that man that was laying on that mat for 38 years? His position and his posture and most likely his body was wrecking with pain because I don't know anybody that can lay in the same place for a long time. Jesus have mercy. Woo, God. Mm. Hallelujah. And so he was laying there, the Bible said. Can you imagine when, hey, when Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. Get up, get up, get up, get up. I need you to get up. He didn't think about it. He didn't second guess it. He got up. He folded that mat, the Bible says. <laughs> Put it under his arm. I'm just paraphrasing. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He put his comfortable place under his arm. Catch the revelation. Mm. Glory to God. You got power. Hallelujah. To be able to take that thing that you've been laying on for so long, my God, and put it on the side of your daughter, Ashley. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You got power now. The thing that you depended on to put you to sleep, to make you comfortable, to ease your pain. Holy Ghost is speaking to somebody. Jesus, have mercy. God said, you have the power now to fold that thing up, Trudy, and put it under your arm and, and get to walking. You know the revelation in that? You know the revelation in that, saints? That's just like the 10 leopards. Come on. And how the one leopard came back and said, thank you to Jesus. Jesus told the leopard, he says, as you go your way. Woo, hallelujah. He told that one leopard that came back to say, thank you, Jesus. He said, as you go your way, you will be healed. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That leopard came back and said, Jesus, I thank you for healing me. He said, listen, as you continue to walk. Hey, glory to God. He said, you shall continue to be healed. Woo. Glory to God. See, one thing about God, he works in forward motion. He don't work back here. And he surely don't work when you're stuck and stagnated. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was sharing with somebody today about being a servant. And let me encourage you all that want to be a servant. Let me tell you something about being a servant. Servants don't stay still. In other words, hey, glory to God. A servant will stay still enough to get its instructions. But once that servant gets its instructions... Come on, that's right. That servant is moving forward. That servant is saying, wait a minute, what can I do now? How can I do it? How can I do it good? How can I do it right? Uh, hold on, let me master this thing. Uh, because I know that as I serve God, he going to bless my socks off. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. If I could just stay low like a servant. Hey, Shatanda Baha. And do what the Father is telling me to do. And I can stay in a place of servitude. That's right. Hallelujah. And I can serve. Hey, glory to God. The people of God. Mm. Hallelujah. If I can serve my pastor. Ah, glory to God. See, I didn't serve many leaders. Uh, come on, somebody. That's why God blesses my church and blesses my ministry. See, I didn't sit long enough uh, and I was poured into to fear. I ain't no fly by night. I ain't just get up talking. I want to start preaching. The devil is a liar. Hey, you got to be made in this thing right here. Woo. You got to go through the fire and you got to be tested and you got to be tried. Um, come on. And that word that you preached the first time still ain't good enough. Um, that word you preach the second time ain't good enough. And if you got a good leader, they're going to tell you you still ain't got it. You ain't got it. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You ain't, you ain't got it. You ain't tapping to no anointing yet. You you ain't even anointed. You don't even know, hallelujah, what it means to carry the oil. Because when you carry the oil, your attitude is not nasty. Come on, somebody. When you carry the hey, God, when you carry the oil of God, you don't mind praying for your enemies. Uh-oh. Woo. I know you don't like me, but I still pray for you. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah, because see this anointing and this oil going to cost you something. Oh, we shifting again. Hallelujah. Come on, let's shift in the Holy Ghost. Uh, my God, in the name of Jesus, when God is calling you to leadership, he's calling you first to serve. See, even in the business, and I brought up the travel business because I only brought in 82 plus and plus people because... I know how to serve. I know how to help you with your need. 
Mm, hallelujah. I'm not coming in this trying to find out what, what you can do for me, but hallelujah, I came into this to find out what I can do for you. See, when you have that attitude, you can serve. Ah, glory to God. This is why I can go inside of anybody's church right now. And if it's a bishop right there and a first lady, let me tell you something. They trust me. You know why? Because I know how to serve. I ain't going to nobody's house trying to take over. Come on here. I know how to sit and be humble. Hey, glory to God in the name of Jesus. And if God tell me to speak, I'm going to speak. And if God tell me to shut up, I'm going to shut up. We got to learn how to serve. <laughs> Well, we got to learn how to serve. Hallelujah. Jesus said the least of these is a servant. He said, and if that's what I got to do, hallelujah, that's what I'm going to do. Come on. He served, hallelujah, the disciples as he was teaching the disciples. Are we shifting right here? For those of you that want to be in leadership, you got to learn how to stay humble. First, you got to stay low down to the ground and you got to learn how to pray. Hallelujah. Through adversity, you got to learn how to pray. Through warfare, you got to learn how to pray. Even when you don't understand, you got to learn how to pray. That's why Jesus taught the disciples how to pray. He said, pray in this manner. This is what I need you to do, 12 disciples. <laughs> I need you to pray just like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Father, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation. I hear y'all. Hallelujah. Lead us not into temptation, oh God, but deliver us from all that is evil for thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't know how to pray, you better learn how to pray that right there because Jesus taught the disciples how to pray. So stop telling the leaders they can't teach you how to do anything. No, you got to learn how to do a whole lot of stuff when it comes to ministry. You got to learn. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In order to be a servant. Mm, hallelujah. You got to have a teachable spirit. I don't know how we got here, but let's just stay here for about 10 more minutes. Somebody needs to know because you're trying to advance in the kingdom and you're trying to go up higher in ministry and you're trying to walk in your ministry. You got to humble yourself. You got to humble yourself. I teach my ministers the way up is down. Did you hear me? The way up is down. The more you let him kill your flesh. <laughs> I don't want to hear from no prophet that's haughty, got a nasty attitude, and you living in a cardboard box. Get out of here. How you going to prophesy to me and you ain't even obeying God? You ain't got no leadership. You're not accountable to anybody. You a fly-by-night prophet, and I call them prophets going wild. I'm going to write the book, and don't y'all take the title either. Prophets going wild, okay? There's a whole lot of them out there. That's why you got to be careful. They ain't trying to serve nobody. They want people to serve them. Oh, y'all not ready? Huh? You think ministry is about you? <laughs> you, you think, min no, 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 no. You're going to be a slave to this. Ha! Ah, glory to God. You're going to be a slave to midnight hours, being up. God speaking to you. Oh. Oh. And if you're a prophet, yeah. Mm -mm. Better make sure you cut out for this. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I was telling the church the other day, I said, I, I was born for this. God revealed that to me and he revealed it again and again and again and again. When God had, mm, hey, Shatan according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you hope and an expected end. When God has called you as his own and he has chosen you, hallelujah, before the foundation of the world, he will equip you. You ain't got to do nothing, but just get in alignment. Come on. You don't have to do much. Hey, glory to God, but get in alignment with God because everything he tells you to do is in his word. Everything he tells Come on here. Everything the father told, hey, Shatan Baha, even through your leader and through leadership, whatever they tell you to do, it's in this book. It's in the word of God. Now, if it ain't in the word, you better not do it. Come on here. Now we're going to shift again. 
Come on. It's in the book. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And if you read in the Old Testament, glory to God, it prepares you. And then if you read in the New Testament, it thrusts you forward. Woo, glory to God. Because you got Timothy speaking. You got the Apostle Paul speaking. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Telling you, amen, what he told the church of Corinth. My God. Hallelujah. So you got your sword as your roadmap when you are serving. You got the word of God. That's why you got to know the word for yourself. Come on here. You, you got to know the word. So there's a season. And I'm talking to those of you that want to be ministers and servants of the Lord. There's a season and a few seasons that God will take you through where you'll just be studying his word. You'll just be reading the word of God. That's why I thank God for my foundation. Amen. I shared with you all my foundation, a church I was with for almost nine years. Glory to God, had a strong foundation in the word. Hallelujah. Bible Institute, I done took so many classes in that Bible Institute till I couldn't take them no more. Come on, somebody. You need a strong foundation to be a pastor. You need a strong foundation to be a leader in the body of Christ. Because I'm telling you, you ain't got a strong foundation, you're going to buck. Let me tell you something. You're going to break, you're going to crumble. Them witches going to chew you up and spit you out. Come on, the devil going to run circles around your head and you're going to think you cuckoo and crazy. Come on, somebody. But the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, whoo, hallelujah, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait, I say again on the Lord. But you know what? People don't want to wait no more. This is a generation. Don't nobody want to wait. Everything is so rapid and so fast paced. And, you know, everybody want to do this and got to be here and got to be a part of this. Why don't you master one thing first? And that's serving. Why don't you master one thing first? And that's serving. Ah, glory to God. Can you humble yourself enough to serve somebody? Woo, hallelujah. Can you give the prophet a glass of water? Can, can you do that? Can you? Can you? Come on. Hallelujah. This and the prophet told the widow woman, can you make me a cake? Bake me a cake and God going to sustain you. Hey, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hey, in the name of Jesus. And not only was the widow woman sustained, but her son was healed. All because she obeyed the prophet. He said, listen, take that little bit of cornmeal you got. Take that little bit of oil. Because she was getting ready to make an excuse. She's like, wait a minute. Well, you know what? Well, we get ready to die anyway. So you know what, prophet? All right, I get it. I get it, Ezekiel. Okay, go, okay, it's fine. You, you can have it. You, you, can, you can have it. <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bake you a cake. I got you. I got you. <laughs> and the Bible said that she, listen, I'm, I'm sure she was in that kitchen whipping it up. Like, you know what? Well, we're going to die anyway. So, you know, God, you done sent this prophet. I don't know how. He got to my house, but you know what? I'm going, okay, come up, a oh, little bit of oil. Oh, you know what? Let me just hold it. Come on, ladies. Y'all know how we hold it. We trying to fry that chicken and we got a little bit of oil. And then we just, well, I'm just going to hold it. Wish I had a bottle. Where I could just, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to hold it till, till, the, till the rest of it is gone. Look, oh, it's a little tiny bit in it. Get out this bottle. <laughs> she said, you know what? I'm just going to give it all to the prophet. Hey, Shatan number high. I'm, I'm just going, you, you know what I'm talking about, Sister Latai. You know how we be trying to get that last bit. So what we do, we put the top on like this and we turn it upside down. And we like, okay, you know what? It's going to all come that way. And then I'm going, yep, I'm going to do it like that. She writes it. it's all right. We can already die anyway. Okay, so at least I'm going to die with the prophet in my house. Y'all y'all didn't catch that, but, but amen. <laughs> because at least if the prophet is in the house and you're going to die, listen, at least you know God going to come. He going to come by here, Lord. Come by here. He going to come. He got to come because the prophet is there. She probably was thinking, you know what? You right. All right, let me, let me bang this barrel and get all this cornmeal out. Because you know what? I'm going to bake you a cake, prophet. Okay, you said God said. So you you said that God said. So I'm going to bake this cake. And I'm going to bake it real good, too. I'm going to put all I got in this cake right here. My husband done died. And you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it my all. Hey, hallelujah. It's all right. We get ready to die. So, you know, the prophet is here. God, mm-hmm. All right. God is doing something. Sure enough. Made the prophet a cake. Ah, glory to God. Can you imagine? After he ate that cake, probably was good and full. <laughs> he said, thank you, widow woman. Because she ain't had no name. The Bible didn't give her a name. 
He might say, thank you so much. He said, you know what? My son is upstairs and he's sick. Come on here. See, the prophet needed just a little bit of strength. Catch the revelation. Sometimes you got, hey, namaste, hallelujah. Sometimes you got to feed the prophet so the prophet can stay strengthened in God to complete the rest of the assignment. Catch the revelation, saints. <sighs> My God, that went over somebody's head. Don't, don't let it go over top of your head. So the prophet, the Bible says, went upstairs and laid on the son's bed and he got healed. He got healed. Somebody shout, God knows exactly what he's doing. Somebody shout, God knows exactly what he's doing. I see y'all sowing tonight. God is moving. God is moving mightily by his spirit. Listen, God is moving mightily by his spirit. How bad do you want it? Mm. My Lord, how bad do you want it? Listen, it's reaping season. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 6. We're going we're gonna to dive into the word. Amen. We thank God for the moving of his spirit thus far. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I didn't pray before I got on this live, but we're going to pray again. Amen. Before we dive into the written word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we just thank you, Father God, tonight. Yes, Lord, we just give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you honor, Father. We give you praise, oh God. Father, we thank you for what you have done thus far. Thank you for this here, your people, oh God, on Instagram and Facebook Live in the name of Jesus, oh God. And even those on YouTube tonight, Father, thank you for every soul. Thank you for every vessel in the name of Jesus that you are pouring into on tonight, Father. Father, we repent of our sins right now, oh God. We ask that you forgive us for all sin in the name of Jesus, oh God. We don't want nothing to hinder the moving of your spirit. So Lord, we just ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to move, have your way, oh God, on this broadcast in the name of Jesus. Oh God, touch those who need healing tonight. Continue to move mightily by your spirit concerning their prayer requests, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I touch and agree. With every prayer request that has been rendered unto your ears on this day, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you now. Let your word go forth with power and conviction in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Yes, Lord. Mm. Galatians chapter 6. If you agree with that prayer, just type amen. Hallelujah. You can say it also out of your mouth. Amen. That's a form of agreement. Galatians chapter 6. Let's go up to verse uh, 6. All right. I did say 7 through 9, but we're going to go up to verse 6. So 6 says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all things, in all good things. Verse 7. And be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Y'all with me tonight? I'm going to read that again. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. I want you to put in the comments, it's reaping season. What does that mean? Whatever you have sown, you reaping it. You're reaping it now. You are reaping for what you have sown. Amen. I remember. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. I see the seeds coming in. I'm going to pray right after we're done with the word. Amen. I'm going to pray over every seed in Jesus' name. Listen, I remember my former pastor, amen, used to tell us that, you know, the time was going to come. And this was years ago before I even started pastoring. Amen. This is when I was a saint, you know, like many of you. Um, yes, yeah, reaping season. And I remember she was saying, she said, the time is going to come where you're going to try to pray for people. And because they have done so much wrong, listen and hear me, hear me in the Holy Ghost. This was years ago over, I want to say about 16, 17 years ago. Listen, it's true. Listen, the time is going to come, she said where you're going to try to pray for people and nothing's going to happen because they're going to be reaping for what they have sown. See, sometimes we hear reaping and we get all excited, but you got to think about what you have done. 
You got to think about, come on, come on, come on. You doing evil to people. You fighting people. You beating up people. You cussing out people. You think good is going to come to you? No, baby. No, sir. No, ma'am. No. Your attitude nasty. Somebody going to give you their nasty attitude. Okay? You treat somebody wrong and you keep treating them wrong. The time's going to come when somebody's going to treat you wrong. Okay, you abuse somebody. Guess what? Abuse is coming your way. And if it don't hit you, it's going to hit your children. Come on. So this is why we have to repent and really mean our repentance. Repentance means to confess your sin. God bless you tonight. Let me catch your name. I do apologize. Amen. I believe that's somebody new on the broadcast. Okay, we got Apostle, Apostle Dr. Keith Curry. God bless you. Hey, Amen. God bless you abundantly, sir. I honor you tonight. Yes, I honor you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, amen, you have those who have done so much that have to now repent. And so repentance means to confess your sin. And after you confess that sin, to turn from it. See, it's one thing, and we don't have as much time, saints. I'm, I, I got to tell you as God's prophet, you don't have as much time to keep playing. You don't have as much time to keep playing. I know you think you can stay in it and stay in your mess and stay in fornication and stay in adultery and stay a liar and stay a cheater. No, 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 no. The Bible speaks about the sins that God would not forgive, or better yet, the sin that will keep you out of the kingdom. Read your Bible. We're not going to touch it tonight, but there are many sins that we talked about last month that will keep us out of the kingdom of God. Okay. So what that means is on the day of judgment, if you're for, if you're caught in that sin and you have not given that sin up or you have not allowed God to deliver you from it because the deliverer is still in the land. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but he delivers in our church. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. The great deliverer, Jesus Christ himself. Is still working. He's still working. Now, I don't know about nobody else. I don't know about your ministry. I don't know about your church. But I'm just saying, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's liberty. But you got to give it to him. And Jesus said what? He said, cast your cares upon me. For I care for you, saith the Lord. So you got to give him that thing, glory to God, that you have no control over it. Come on, somebody. And, and so he says... Listen, you're going to reap for what you have sown. Everything that you have done wrong. Come on. See, when we hear reaping, we get excited. We ready to shout. But the truth of the matter is, what have you sown? I want you all to think about that. All 30 people. Come on. And a few of you on Instagram. What have you sown? What have you sown? Come on. Think, think about that. And I'm not talking about just money. Come on. Have you sown deceit? Have you sown discord? Uh-oh. Are you the one that's trying to come in between a whole lot of stuff and cause confusion? Have you sown? <laughs> have you sown confusion? Because if you have sown confusion, it's coming back to you whether you want it to or not. Come on. God's word is true. So we have to be very conscious and aware of the things that we do. But see, this is what causes us to cry out to God for deliverance. Hey, hallelujah. The moment that you realize your sin is going to cost you, the moment that you realize you can get caught in your sin. Come on. This is why Jesus said, listen, he said, cast your cares upon me for I care for you, saith the Lord. But he also said, glory to the Lamb of God. Mm. Hallelujah. He also said that he would deliver you and bring you out. Come on here. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us out of them all. But you got to want to be delivered. Come on. You, you can't just say I'm a wretch undone or I'm dealing with this sin or, you know, my mama went through this or my daddy went through this. My daddy was an alcoholic. My mama was a whore. You know, my grandmother was a prostitute. Okay. But the God that we serve, he's a curse breaker. Come on. Jesus is able to break the curse. I just want to teach right here for a minute. Jesus is able to break the curse. He's a curse breaker. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. His anointed. Hey, Shatan Hallelujah. Comes to destroy yokes. And what is a yoke? 
It's that sin that's around your neck that keeps you in bondage. But God sends forth his anointing. Ah, glory to God. To free you. Catch the revelation. You called it Michelle. She said, amen. Come on. So God comes to deliver us. Hallelujah. But you got to want it bad enough. You got to say, you know what? I'm the curse breaker in my family. Come on. And Jesus even said in his word, hallelujah. He said, listen, you shall be saved, but not just you, but your whole household. In other words, when God saves you, he saves your whole entire bloodline. Did you know that? Come on. The fact that you're saved now, God can come and save your whole entire bloodline. That's so beautiful. Hallelujah. That's so beautiful. And I can share a testimony. Amen. Because some of you know my history. You know my, my background from my family. Amen. My family are Jehovah Witnesses. Amen. I'm the only one in my family that's saved on my mother's side. Amen. I'm the only one. Glory to God. And when I say that, meaning my aunt is Jehovah Witness, my aunties, my cousins, my, my mom, my dad, they all Jehovah Witnesses. I'm the only one that's saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. So I pray every day for my family. But not only that, I live the life. Come on, I live the life. Hey, Shatanda Baha, I'm not just a Christian that goes to church and somebody that's just professing Jesus. No, and every chance I get, I tell them about the Lord. Now they push Jesus to the side, but you know, it is what it is. They can't stand before God and say they did not hear or they did not receive the opportunity of salvation. Come on. I don't just preach to y'all. I preach to my family. I preach to my mommy and my daddy. <laughs> Love them and all. But I tell them, listen, if you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're going to die and go to hell. And hell is real. I ain't cuss. I'm <laughs> just saying. Come on. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. <laughs> listen, that's why Jesus, hey, Shatan the Baha, when he was on the earth, he said, listen, when my mother and father forsake me, it's God who's going to take me up. <sighs> Come on. Listen, ah, glory to God. You're going to go through tribulation. You're going to go through testing. You're going to go through trials. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And let me just encourage you here. Hey, hallelujah. It's God's will for you to go through. But you got to go through like a good soldier. Come on, you got to go through knowing your word. Hallelujah. You got to go through saying, for God, I live and for God, I'm going to die. And if you're not there yet, get there. Hey, hallelujah. If you're not there yet, I want you to get there. I want you to get there. God is looking for soldiers. He's looking for ambassadors. He's looking for those that's going to carry the torch. Hey, of his fire and his anointing. Hallelujah. God ain't looking for no jelly backs. It's too many of those. Come on, it's too many compromising apostles and bishops and all of this foolishness. Come on, somebody. Listen, it's too many of those. Hey, Shatan Nabaha, in the name of Jesus, God is looking for holy leaders. Woo, that's going to carry the torch of the fire of God and lead the way. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I share my testimony how I got upgraded to my room in Jamaica. And some of you might say, that don't mean nothing, apostle. That How you tired at him? It does. Because for the president and the CEO of the company to say to me, we upgraded your room. We know what you paid for, but we upgraded it because we have been watching you. Come on here. We gave you a $2,800 room because we have been watching you. Hey, glory to God. See, that's something that only God can do. And listen, I wasn't the only one in the company. It was about five of us out of the entire company that went to Jamaica. Woo, hallelujah. Sound like being chosen to me. I don't know about nobody else. Hey, glory to God, but you better receive this word because just as God did it for me, he's more than able to do it for you. But what have you sown? Who have you helped? Who have you prayed for? Who have you labored with? Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And I'm not talking about praying for the same person. And I ain't talking about talking to the same person every day. Come on here. That gets boring after a while. God wants you to reach new souls. Come on here. He wants you to pour into new people. He, Oh, God. Hallelujah. If you prophesying to the same people, that ain't prophecy. You prophesying because you know they life. Can you prophesy to somebody you do not know? Hey, God, come on here. Can you encourage somebody that you do not know? Come on here. Hallelujah. Can you give some money to somebody that you don't know? So you give money to somebody you know because you know they're going to give it back to you. But can you feed the homeless? Come on, somebody. Can you clothe the naked? Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Can you help somebody keep a roof over their head? 
Come on here. That's ministry, huh? Because Jesus, Jesus told us, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, listen, when you have done it to the least of these, you have done it unto me. You have done it as unto me. Glory to God. He said, when you feed those that need, that need food, hallelujah, when you clothe those who are naked, my God. Hallelujah. When you help, hallelujah, somebody to be sustained. Hallelujah. Because God sustained you one time. Glory to God. Can you help those that need to be helped? Or are you the one that always needs help? We got to stop being the one that always needs help. You always need a word. You always need encouragement. Why don't you be the one to encourage now? Why don't you start to sow good seeds? Come on. Why don't you start doing good? Hey, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. It's one of the Psalms. Amen. Where the psalmist says, glory to God. He said, listen, trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. Can we trust in the Lord and do good? Can we do good to one another without wanting anything back? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I tell my ministers, they like, Apostle, you pour out every day. You pour out every day. I pour out for God's people. Hallelujah. I'm not here because I want to be here. I'm here on assignment. I know what the Father has called me to do. Glory to the Lamb of God. Even with the backlash and the retaliation. Come on, somebody. Here in North Carolina, listen, there's so many mothers that have come to the ministry. Hear me in the spirit. Now they know how to trust God. There's so many mothers that didn't know which way to go. Mm. Didn't know how to parent their kids. Come on, somebody. But the Holy Ghost taught me how to raise my children. Glory to God. And what God gave me, I give to them. But I caught so much backlash. I remember there was an apostle who I trusted. And she began to mentor me. And let me just encourage you all. Because you got to be careful who you listen to. I shut it down in a moment. Hallelujah. I had to shut it down because this apostle, and I still respect her. Don't get it twisted. I still respect God's leaders, but I got to tell you this. I remember when she was mentoring me and we got to the part to where we was talking about ministry. And immediately I felt the spirit of jealousy come through that zoom. Oh, y'all not ready. Hey, shatan I said, God, what is taking place? He said, the spirit of jealousy. And I began to tell her, she said, so what are you doing here in North Carolina? Has God changed your ministry from Philadelphia to North Carolina? And, and has he changed anything? I said, God ain't changed nothing. She was like, well, what you mean? She was like, because here, you know, in Philadelphia, you know, you had your conferences, you had your fresh fire, you had your, you know, your, your, your um, prophetic conference for the prophets, the gathering of the prophets. So what's so different in North Carolina? I said, you know what's different? I said, God said he was going to heal families. Huh? She said, so wait a minute. Now you telling me you got a men's ministry, a women's ministry, and a children's ministry? I said, yes. All tied in one. All tied in one. She said, I never heard of anybody having a family ministry. What are you talking about? I said, well, God's going to do it. He made me a promise. I said, that's what he told me. He was going to send families into the church to be healed, delivered, and set free. Husbands, wives, and children. <laughs> Come on here. And is not the Lord doing it? Hey, hallelujah. But I had to cut off that spirit. So immediately, Mom Cynthia, as soon as that Zoom right before it was over, I said, thank you, woman of God. Thank you for your mentoring. She said, well, you got a few more sessions. I said, no, we don't. Because she began to tell me, she was like, how is that possible? And I just felt the spirit of, you know, just, just this spirit just coming against me, like to try to change my mind. How you going to change God's mind? Now, you got to remember, we both prophets now. She's a prophet. I'm a prophet. So, so, so you got to be careful. Yes, Lord, I hear you. As God is getting ready to elevate some of you, you got to be very careful. You got to be very, and I still love the woman of God. Listen, still love her. <laughs> but I had to, <laughs> I had to depart because I knew what God said. And guess what? As soon as that happened, and as soon as I disconnected, here come the families. Flooding in. <laughs> because guess what? Hey, Shatan Nabaha. God wanted, God wanted me to say what he told me. Now, what if I would have held back out of fear? And said, well, you know what? You an apostle. And you know, I'm getting ready to be ordained as an apostle. This was right before my apostle, my apostleship. 
This was right before the consecration and the affirmation. Now, what if I would have took her word over God's word? I would have been in disobedience and God would have shut everything down. I said, Lord, I trust you. Hey, hallelujah. I said, God, I trust you. I don't see it yet, but I know what you told me. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. And I don't need no doubting Thomases near me either. Come on. Some of you got doubting Thomases. You tell them your vision. You tell them your, your dream. You tell them your ministry. And they like, you sure God going to use you to do that? You sure God really told you that? <laughs> That's those hating spirits. See that? I thank God. Because see, even as a prophet, we still got to trust him. Come on here. I don't know who, who believes that prophets, we ain't got to trust God. You Come on, Jonah. Listen, we got to trust God more than the saints got to trust God. Because the Bible says that we prophesy in part, but we know in part. But the Bible also said that God has given us a measure of faith. So he has given the prophet a measure of faith that probably exceeds your measure of faith. Why? Because the prophet walks close to God. See? Let me just teach real quick. The prophet walks very, very, very close with God. And those prophets who are not walking close with God like this, here come God. God's still following them. Saying, wait a minute, you still belong to me. I need an investment. I need, I need, I need. <laughs> yes, Lord, I hear you. I need payback on my investment. So God, he follows the prophet. He, he, listen, he'll send somebody. Come on here. Listen, y'all know what I'm talking about. And after a while, the prophet is still. And here comes God talking to him, giving him dreams, saying, you know what? This is what I promised you. This is what I told you. This is where you need to go, Jonah. I need you to go to Nineveh and I need you to cry against their sin. I need you to cry against their wickedness. That's what I need you to do, Jonah. I need you to go and I need you to go now. Come on, Jonah. I need you to get up. The Bible said, hey, Shatan Baha, yes, Lord. That God said, Jonah, arise. Come on. This word is so good tonight. Because y'all, y'all hear it again. God saying, get up. Get up and go to the place that I am telling you to go to. Get up and do what I am saying you to do, say of God. You got to get up now. It's reaping season. So guess what? If you get up now and you do what God is saying to do. The blessings are going to overtake you and not just monetary blessings. I'm talking about spiritual blessings. I'm talking about overflow. Hallelujah. In the realm of the spirit. Glory to God to where you be able to pray the way that you desire to pray. Some of you want to pray for hours. You want to pray. Hey, In the realm of the spirit, God will give you that. He will give you that prayer. Come on. He, hey, glory to God. He will give you that. Those desires, the Bible says, when you delight yourself in the Lord. See, there's always a requirement before the blessing. <laughs> the Bible says, when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. See how, see, I know, I know, I know. Everybody wants the blessings, but they don't want to. You have to follow the word of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. But you got to delight yourself in him. What does that mean? Stay in his presence. Obey his word. Honor him. Reverence him. Come on. Hallelujah. Delight yourself in him. Woo. Tell him how beautiful he is. And don't tell him how beautiful he is. And then two seconds later, you don't trust him. Come on, you're going to tell God how beautiful he is. Hey, hallelujah. When the rubber meets the road, you still got to trust him. God, you're still beautiful. I still trust you. Mm, I'm going to delight myself in you, God. <laughs> so you can give me the desires of my heart. The time is now. Somebody shout the time is now. Let me give you all the other scriptures. Amen. It's 1137. This is a good time because we're going to get off by 12 o'clock. Amen. The other scriptures I wanted to give you all was Luke 6 and 38. Amen. Luke 6 and 38. What does it read? 
I'm going to turn to it. I know what it says, but I want you all to turn as well if you can. Amen. Luke 6 and 38. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. And this is Jesus speaking here. So what does he say? He says, give and it shall be given unto you. He says, good measure, press, press down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you have given, it shall be given back to you in return. All right. The word of God says what? Give. That's a command. All right. Give is a command. Now, if you don't give, you can't receive. It says give and it shall be given unto you. So every time we give, it's coming back to you. I teach the ministry. I teach the members here. Your seed leaves your hand, but it never leaves your life. Did you hear me? Every time you sow or you give to the kingdom of God or you give back to God, it leaves your hand, but it never leaves your life. God honors seed saints. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for, for seed sowing. Amen. I would not be where I am today. Hallelujah. I'm going to share my testimony also. I shared the praise report about the upgrade for my room in Jamaica, but I'm getting ready to share a testimony that's going to blow somebody's mind because it blew my mind when God gave it back to me today. Amen. So the word of God says, good measure, press down. So I want you all to catch this revelation. We're going to work this text real quick. Jesus told him, he, listen, he told him, he said, give and it shall be given unto you. So every time you give, it's coming back to you. So I want you to remember every time you give, I don't care if it's $10. I don't care if it's $100. I don't care if it's $1,000. Whatever you sow, whatever seed you sow, it's coming right back here. I want you to always remember that, okay? All right? It's coming right back here. I'm going to tell you why. Then it's coming to you good measure. So it's not bad. All right. It's coming pressed down. Now, if I was to take a barrel or something and I was to take a bunch of newspaper, this is the revelation God gave me years ago. You know how you take a barrel, you take a trash can, a clean trash can, and you just ball up uh, newspaper. You got about maybe 10, 10 thick newspapers and you just take them and you ball them up. Right, Sister Ty? You take them all and you ball them up and you just push them in the trash can. You take some more and you just push it in the trash can. You take some more newspaper and you just push it down. That's the revelation that God gave me. He said, daughter, every time you give, hallelujah, it's going to be pressed down. Now, 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 here it is. All right. It's pressed down. So every time, look, God is pouring into that can. He going to pour into that can and he going to press it down for you. Hallelujah. He going to pour more into that can and he going to press it down. Do y'all see the weight of it now? You see the weight of your blessing because you gave? Look, listen to this. It's coming back into the can and it's getting pressed down. Such a blessed word, right? Listen, so now it's good measure. Now it's pressed down. Now look at this. He said, now I'm going to shake it together. Woo. So now I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> he said, listen, your good measure, your substance. Now I'm going to shake it together. Hallelujah. It says shake it together. Now it's coming out the can, Sister Tap. Come on here. Hey, your harvest, your overflow. It's just too much. You're like, wait a minute. It's shaking together. Now it's running over out of the can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus goes on to say, shall men give unto your bosom. So when we give to God, hallelujah, I thank God for this. When we give to God, it's coming back here. It's going to hit you right here because God's going to cause men and women to give back to you when you give. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he's going to do it. God is faithful. Somebody shout, God is faithful. Now, here's another blessing. The same measure that you have given it in. So if you gave it in obedience, if you gave it with a cheerful heart, if you gave it in love, however you gave it, Sister Maisha, guess what's going to happen? It's coming back to you the same way. <laughs> hey, glory to God. It's coming back the same way. This is why God says he loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. She said, this word wasn't meant for me. I nodded off to sleep and you were saying that. 
I was commenting, then you woke up. Okay, Sister Christina, just stay with us. Not understanding that, but just stay with us. Glory to God. You're going to reap for what you have sown. And so what that means is even the second part of that, God will cause men and women, women to give back unto you. It's coming back. It's coming back, but it's coming back the same way you gave it. Come on. God is amazing. God is amazing. Hallelujah. Now I can share my testimony. I can share it because it blew my mind this morning. So last night I had a dream. And don't y'all holler either. Some of y'all going to holler on this because I hollered. <laughs> I had a dream that I was doing hair. I had a beauty salon. And I had a client in my chair. And I had a client that was waiting to get her hair done. And so, <laughs> I see y'all hitting those hearts. I tried to get away from it. I really did. I tried to get away from doing hair. But God told me when I got here, I love you, Mother Cynthia. God bless you. Thank you for sewing tonight. I, when I got here, God told me, he said, get the building. He said, how is that? Wait a minute, let me, let me say exactly how he said it. He said, get the building. Build my church. That's what he said. He said, get the building, build my church. He said, then everything else will follow. That's what he told me. Right? <laughs> you see how we be looking right. Y'all here, I don't know who y'all be going to. But anyway, no, y'all be looking nice, Sister Ty. <laughs> she said we nappy. <laughs> I get your hair right, okay? Listen. Lord Jesus. Who y'all got the y'all listen, because when I woke up from the dream, Sister Latasha, um Lashanta, when I woke up from the dream, I sat on my bed and I was like, really, God. I sat there for like 10 minutes. <laughs> I was like. I said, really, God? I said, really? Like, this this how, this how you're going to do me? You're going you gonna... to... Because some of y'all know in Philly, that salon was popping. And when I tell you it was popping, it was popping with the Holy Ghost. Listen, I... God was saving. When I tell y'all, he saved in the salon. I see Mom Cynthia hitting that, hitting those hearts. He saved in the salon. Listen, he delivered in the salon. <laughs> He set the captain free. Listen, I'm telling you, Mom sent this. She on here. She could tell you. I did her hair for years. I did her daughter's hair for years. Listen, her daughter got saved in the basement. She accepted Jesus Christ in the salon. I'm sharing this with you all because I'm giving God glory. Huh. Y'all don't understand. So when I okay, let me let me get back to the testimony. So. Amen, Sister Sophia. You're going to fly in? <laughs> That's another thing God said. He said people going to fly in from all over. I said, okay, God, I, I need your strength. I'm going to need your strength. Amen? So let me get to the testimony real quick. Let me get it all out. Then we, then we can, we can, you know, we can, <laughs> we can elaborate, okay? Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. I'm telling you, people of God, women of God, listen. She said, I need a haircut. Mom, now you know I cut your hair in like 10 minutes. Choo, 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 and it be sharp too. Okay, listen. I got to bring it on in and bring it down because I got to get it all out. So in the dream, the lady that was waiting, she just kept looking at me. It's so prophetic. So prophetic, Sister Tafia. So I was doing the one lady's hair. And as I'm doing her hair, she's finished. I take the cape off of her. And I'm walking her to the register. You know, she get ready to pay and I'm getting ready to let her go out. And I was going to do the, uh, you know, get the other client started. But it was a certain look that the other client was giving me. And that's when I woke up. I woke up with that client looking at me. And when I woke up, I was like, okay, God. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. He said, there are people that are waiting for you in the region that you're in. And I was like, well, Lord, we, we still got the church. I'm like, you know, we got the church and we got, you know, some other businesses that you said to open and some other. He said, uh-uh. He said, just like you were faithful, we get in the church and building the church. He said, I'm going to do the same with the beauty salon. Now, here's the kicker. God spoke to me and I said, okay, God, how are the two 
going to mix. Because I asked him. I said, God, now the church is very demanding. He said, I'm raising up leaders. Don't worry about that. And I said, okay, God. That's one. Then I said, well, the church, I said, the, the salon is very demanding. He said, you already know how to do that. You can do that with your eyes closed. She said, it's a gift. That's right. I, I could do hair in my sleep, literally. I give God praise. I take no glory for it, okay? I could do hair in my sleep. Listen. He spoke to me and he said, listen, this, this right here, it messed me up. I'm trying to get it out. It messed me up, Saint. The church that I was a part of, and I thank God for my former church. Most of the women there, I did their hair. Majority of the church, I did their hair. And I said, okay, God. He said, you know how I had you to balance the two? I said, yes. He said, it's going to be the same. He said, and remember... Ooh, this thing blessed me. It blessed me. He said, remember when I sent the increase to the salon? I said, yes, Lord. He said, you were obedient mm, in sowing your tithe and your offering. I'm not bragging, but I made thousands of dollars a week. Okay. And I gave my tithe off of those thousands of dollars. Hear me. The Lord spoke to me and he said, daughter, mm. he said, because you were faithful. Mm. Listen, 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 listen. The increase was already within the church. Because I told y'all half the church, I was doing their hair. So the increase was there, but God wanted my obedience. That's right, Minister Hattie. He wanted my obedience. And I'm telling you all, sometimes my tithe was $1,000 a week because I'd have made so much. And then there were times that God said, give an extra 200 because there's a need for the church. I said, huh? I said, wait a minute, God. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My tithe is 1000 Wait a minute. You want me to give $1,200 this week? Both hands lifted to God. I'm telling y'all the truth. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, daughter, it's reaping time. He said, it's reaping time. I said, God, that was years ago. He said, oh, you thought I forgot? It pays to obey God. It pays. Mm. I feel like crying, but I ain't going to cry because some of y'all going to cry with me. <laughs> when I tell you all, God is faithful. But you got to be faithful to him. See, he's faithful all by himself. Because he's God all by himself. <sighs> so even if you don't obey him, he's still faithful. Meaning he's still God. <laughs> And he's still sovereign. It's just that if you don't give, ain't nothing coming back. <laughs> That's just like if we eat our seed. I remember there were times I wanted to go out to the buffet. I wanted to go with the saints after church. It's so much stuff I wanted to do. And God said no. There were so many sacrifices that I had to pay. There were so many things that I wanted to do that I could not do because God was birthing in me the spirit of obedience. He said, daughter, I need you to put it in the offering. And there came a time I didn't even second guess it. I didn't question God because if I had it, if I had it, that means, guess what? That he desires for me to give it. So God is saying, even now, you're getting ready to reap for what you have sown. When I tell y'all that dream messed me up and then the word on top messed me up. <laughs> I was like, God, that was old. I said, that was years ago. He said, uh-uh. He said, you're in your place of promise now. Hey, he, he said, you're in your place of promise. Wait, he said, I have to bless you now. 
Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Catch the revelation. Just think, Sister Kashina, if I never moved. Woo! Glory to God. Just think, mm, hallelujah, if I stayed in my comfortable place. Because guess what? I had a full beauty salon in my basement. I could do hair when I wanted to. Oh, and I did hair till about 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. I could make appointments when I wanted to. I could close the shop when I wanted to. It was in the basement of my home. And God was even dealing with me when he said, sell your house. See, this is an extension of my testimony because I didn't sell my house before I moved to North Carolina. He told me to move, Cynthia Marie. He said, get the house. He said, find the house, get the house. And then sell your house. I was like, wait a minute. That don't make no sense. He said, well, I, hey, Shatan Nabaha. He said, I already prepared you. How did he prepare me? I already saved up $10,000. I'm helping somebody right here. The Lord had me to save up $10,000, Sister Maisha, in about six to seven months. I remember when God told me to put up a certain amount of money. He said, put your tip money up. This is going to bless about seven of y'all. He said, put your tip money up. I said, yes, Lord. And so as I was making money, doing hair, making money, the tip money started increasing. I don't think y'all hear me. I, I, don't, I, don't th I don't think you hear me. Listen, Latanya, she said, you, you're truly helping me. Listen, let me, let me tell you something. So I had the money. So let's say, for instance, if their hair was $80, their tip was like $60. They were tipping me almost the same amount <laughs> as the hairdo. The tips, Nene, started increasing as I became obedient. First, it was like $5, $10. You know, you know how we do. We go, you know, get a nice do. You know, you give your stylist $20. You're like, here, you know, thank you. I see you in two weeks. They started giving me $40, started giving me $60, started to here, take this $80. Matter of fact, here, get this to the kids. Come on. And this was before I moved. When God told me I'm getting ready to transition you and move you to Raleigh, North Carolina. He told me to save. I started saving. And it wasn't until I got to almost $10,000. I'm helping somebody. I ain't bragging. Listen, I, look. I can say this. I'm a wealthy woman of God because of obedience. That's it. That's it. Amen. What he gives me is to help others. That's it. That's it. Amen. I'm a businesswoman. I've been doing this for a long time so I can help so many of you out if you would just listen. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. If you would just listen. Come on, Latanya. You shared that testimony yesterday. It was powerful. She said, I got it now. I listen. Come on. Because there are many people that have gone before you. And listen, where you're trying to go, some of y'all trying to go, you just need somebody to tell you how to get there. Instead of you falling in the pitfalls, you just listen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so I thank God. So the rest of the testimony is this. That God spoke to me and he said, daughter, you were so faithful in your church and you gave and you gave and you gave out of obedience. Listen, I'm listen, some of y'all, y'all get upset if God tell you to sow a hundred dollars. I'm talking about thousand of thousand dollar seeds a week. I don't think y'all hear me. Hello? Anybody in the back? Any can anybody hear me? <laughs> Somebody say, wait a minute. Yeah, because in five years, hey, hi y'all by shape. In five years, God may have you to own a whole, a whole, a whole hotel. You might own a whole franchise. Some of you might even own a McDonald's. You know, it only costs about $20,000 to open up your own McDonald's. Huh? Anna says, this is good ground. Come on, the woman of God, she knows. And she sows every now and then. Anna sow every now and then when God tell her to. I don't know her story, but she could tell it. Listen, I'm telling you all what I know. God is in the blessing business, but you got to be obedient. 
You got to be obedient. That testimony blew my mind. The word that he gave me about the salon blew my mind. And when I tell you all, even with the, mm, Jesus, have mercy. I thank you, Lord. Even with the businesses and the church and everything coming together, I'm telling you, the Lord spoke to me, Kashina, and I put it in our ministry group. I'm going to share this last thing and I'm going to bring it on in. That there are different businesses within the ministry. But let me say this. There are many jobs within the ministry that are getting ready to take place, that are getting ready to open up to the saints. You got to catch it. You, you, you got to, people of God, you, you have to catch this. Amen. This is not something, ooh, Jesus, have mercy. Let me, let me, I'm, this is the last thing I'm going to say, and I promise I'm going to leave it alone. I, I'm going to leave it alone. Some of y'all caught it, but I'm going to leave it alone. Listen. I remember when, now some of y'all might not like Bishop T.D. Jakes, but I love him. And I learned to love his ministry when I heard that he had a mega church. Listen, so many people talked about the man of God. They talked about his wife. But if you listen to his testimony, him and his wife slept in a car for over seven months when she was pregnant. And his testimony is, that when him and his wife, I'm talking about Bishop T.D. Jakes, you can look it up. Go on YouTube, you'll look it up, okay? Him and his wife slept in the car for seven months. I believe it was seven or eight months. And his wife got pregnant. He, he, he had got, they, they, she, they, they had gotten pregnant. And he still remained faithful. He remained faithful sleeping in a car. See... Somebody might say, well, Pastor, you had it. You had it. No, I had it, but I didn't have to give it. <laughs> when God was telling me to sow them $1,000 seeds into my former church, I didn't have to give it. I could have just been taking the money like some of y'all. Uh-oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like some of the saints, you know, the, some of the saints take the money. Oh, I get $1,000 a week. I get 1000 I get $3,000. i am going to get $20 to the church. Shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> Come on, blessings to you, my brother, Apostle Jay. Yes, we talking about harvest time. We talking about reaping. Hallelujah. For what we have sown. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God has not forgotten you, Apostle. Hallelujah. The Lord has not forgotten you. Every seed, every good deed, every prayer. Hallelujah. Every form of labor. Hallelujah. That you have given unto God's people, Apostle. God has not forgotten you. You came on this live just on time. Ah, glory to God. In time and on time. <laughs> In God's time. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 From one prophet to another, be encouraged. Ah, glory to God. I was just sharing. Hallelujah. How I have labored for years, many years. Glory to God. And the Lord gave me a prophetic dream. Amen. About what he's getting ready to do. But he took me all the way back. And I thought God had forgot. I thought the Lord forgot. Hallelujah. He said, Lord, I didn't forget. Hey, Shatanda Baha. Hallelujah. God does not forget anything. He watches everything that we do. Come on. Hallelujah. But let me just encourage those of you in the storm. I hear you, God. Let me just encourage those of you that's in your lowest place. That's when you give. That's when you sow. Hallelujah. Because I couldn't see this right here. Amen. 15 years ago, 10 years ago, I couldn't see this. I, God did not show me. Thank you so much for the time reminder. Thank you. God did not show me. And if he would have told me, I'm going to move you and then I'm going I'm going to restore you. I would not have. I probably would have moved out of timing. You see, but I had to go through what I had to go through. Amen. Listen, I even went through a bad marriage. Then I went through a divorce and that could have kept me back in Philadelphia. You see, because I love my husband. I love my marriage. We had a lot of stuff that was wrong going, going on in it. Amen. But I, but I love my husband. Amen. Come on, somebody. And I love being married. So, so it wasn't even, you know, the fact of, you know, we just agreed to just do this because it was just so much. You understand? And I'm saying that to say this, people of God, I could have stayed in Philadelphia. I didn't have to obey God. Hey, Shatanda Baha, do you hear me? I didn't have to obey God. 
I could have stayed like some people and try to, you know, make it work. And, but, but listen, I knew it was over when I fasted for like 30 days and ain't nothing happened. I mean, I fasted, y'all. I fasted and prayed. I was like, I was like, God, you ain't speaking. You ain't moving. He said, no. God told me. This is what he told me. This is going to bless three of you. He said, that was your choice, but that wasn't my choice. I said, well, God, why did you honor it then? He said, I didn't honor it. I allowed it to happen. I said, well, wait a minute, God. He said, I'm a gentleman. Don't forget that. Come on. He's a gentleman. Hey, Shatanda Baha. So he's not going to override our will. Even if we're out of his will, he's going to let you just go ahead on and do whatever you want to do. Because he's a gentleman. God. Hallelujah. That's why he's God all by himself. He doesn't force himself on us. He talked to you and it's up to you to obey him. <laughs> Listen, God don't be prying and all that. He don't pry in your business. He tell you what to do. He give you instruction. And you don't listen. He send his prophet. He send warning. After that, you in trouble. So I could have stayed in Philadelphia. Come on. And, and been just as miserable. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> but God said, who you love more? Hey. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. See, that's when you got to choose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because see, I could have gave up everything to the point to where giving up my ministry and everything. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to right here? God don't want you to give up your ministry because your ministry is your lifeline. Hey, Shatan Baha, in the name of Jesus. And guess what? When you make the wrong decision to be with the wrong person, and you, who am I talking to? And you connect with the wrong people or the wrong individual, it's going to cost you something. And it just might cost you your mind. You might lose your mind in the midst of it because God had to restore back my mind. Hey, hallelujah. I was on the verge of almost losing my mind. Do you hear me? The prophet. Hello? Prophesying in the car. Come on, still on the prayer line. <laughs> Y'all not ready. Hallelujah. It was God that was keeping me. Trying to be in something that God ain't even ordained. Been there, done that. I got the t-shirt, the track sneakers. I got the fitted hat. Listen, I can tell you something. <laughs> Been there. It didn't take away from the love. And see, it, yes, uh, Shakay, I know my Shakay, I hear you guys. Some of you still love the individual, but you got to cut it now. You got to cut. Who am I talking to? Listen, you got to cut. You got to cut now. You got to love them enough to leave them alone. And just let God do the rest. Amen. God's going to restore. I don't know who I'm talking to. He's going to restore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because guess what? It wasn't good for you in the beginning to begin with. You made it good. You made it what it is. Come on, you made it what it is. And, and yes, Lord, I hear you. I could not blame my ex-husband for everything. Can I just be real right here? I couldn't blame him. There was a part that I played in that too. So I had to repent to God for overstepping and not listening to him. See, a lot of times, yes, Lord, I hear you. A lot of times we want to blame the other person. They're this and they're that and they ain't saved and I'm saved and they don't, they don't love God and I love God and yada, 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 yada. Okay, we got that part. But you have to now repent for the part that you played because your hands still got to be clean before God. Your heart still has to be pure before him, right? And then you have to forgive the other person. For what they have done to you. Because if you hold on to that. Then you'll take that into the next marriage. You'll take that into the next relationship. So after the severing. Then comes the healing process. Come on. Because I had to go through all of that too. Amen. Been there. Done that. I, I did it. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I did it. The Lord helped me. I, I couldn't do it by myself. You see. You see, so I don't know who that's for tonight, but let go and let God have his way. She said, Lord, I repent on tonight. See that? Amen. Lakia came in right on time and got her blessing. Amen. So we bless the father. Hallelujah. It is, it's reaping season. Amen. You shall reap for what you have sown. Save God. I want to give you the rest of these scriptures is second Corinthians 
Um, thank you for the time. Watch. We're not doing too bad. It's 12.07. Second Corinthians. Amen. There's an uplifting tonight. Yes, Lord, I hear you. There's an uplifting. God said there's an uplifting. He's lifting you all up out of what you were in. God is uplifting you. Yes, yes, Lord, I hear you. He said there's an uplifting tonight. Do you feel it? You feel, you feel God uplifting your spirit tonight? If that's you tonight, just hit those hearts. God is uplifting you. Amen. You've been in the valley too long. You've been in that dry place too long. You've been in that dark place too long. The Father is uplifting you tonight. Amen. He's uplifting you. Mm. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians uh, 9 and 6. All right. 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. Amen. Amen. What does it say? It says, but this I say, he who soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. But he who sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. Amen. That ties into the testimony, right? Amen. Because when God was challenging me to sow large seeds, I'm telling you all. Mm, and I'm not talking about one time. And this wasn't income tax either. I Listen, I didn't start filing income tax on my business until, ooh, I think I had been doing here about maybe six years. I had been doing here under the table, didn't even know that I could file taxes, that I could get an EIN number and, you know, get my business, you know, um, situated with the city and all of that. It wasn't until about six years that I did that. I'm sharing this with you all because it wasn't tax money that I was given. See, some of y'all could sow a thousand dollar seed around tax time. No, this was every week. Okay. So I don't understand. Maybe it's just me. I, I don't get it. You know, your tithe might be 150, but you struggle with that. How do you struggle with $150? I don't get it. <laughs> Amen. When God, you know, is calling some of us to tithe thousands of dollars. I just, I, to whom much is given, much is required. I guess it's the tithe, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. But let's read the scripture again. What does it say? But this I say, hear the word, hear the word, people of God. He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Let's stop right there. You give a little, you're going to receive a little. That's what that means. You give a little, you're going to get back a little. All right? And whenever you see a TH on the end of a word, that means continual. So let's read it again. But this I say, he that continues to sow sparingly shall reap sparingly. All right? But he that continues to sow bountifully shall reap also bountifully all right so if you want a great harvest be an abundant giver you got goals you got dreams you got aspirations you got vision god is giving you a vision you might want a food truck you might want a daycare you got to be an abundant giver hello you can't give god crumbs you can't give crumbs into the kingdom and then you expect god to give you millions it doesn't work like that you have to be an abundant giver now. And then you have to be a cheerful giver. Yes, Lord, I hear you. God says he loves a cheerful giver. When we give from our heart, he loves that. Amen. The Bible says we should not give of grudging. We should not give grudgingly or of necessity. What does that mean? If you got to have an attitude about it, you do best just holding your seed back. Thank you, Michelle. She says, so to go. Come on, and I'm going to say it like my prophetic teacher. My, my prophetic teacher would say to us at um, Eagle's Nest, she would say, if you can sow there, you can go there. <laughs> I'm telling you, that stuck with me for life. I thank God for my prophetic teacher, Pastor um, Barbara. She said, listen, if you can sow there, then you can go there, baby. I said, what you say? She said, if you can sow there. I said, whoa, that's deep. So I say that to you tonight. If you can sow there, then you can go there. If you can't sow there, then you can't go there. <laughs> Somebody shout, I can sow there. And I'm going to go there too. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. I see y'all laughing, but it's the truth anyhow. If you can sow there, then you can go there. See that? Michelle said, hallelujah, on my way. Amen. Come on, somebody. So let's just seek the face of God for the next 60 seconds. Let's just really seek God right here. Amen. And ask the Lord tonight, where are you at in your giving? 
And I want you to really think about it. Don't exit the live. Don't exit. Don't exit. Because when you start talking about giving, they get upset, Sister Ty. People get mad. Don't don't leave. Don't leave. Because this is the part that you need to hear. See? Y'all see the viewers dropping? We was at 30. Now we at 24. See that? People get off. They eat and they run. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. All right? I want you to stay here. How has your giving been? Have you been given according to how God has blessed you? Have you been given according to how God has blessed you? I want you to think about that for a minute. Have you been giving your 10% to your church where you're being fed? Come on, because wherever you're being fed, that's where God wants you to grow. So you can only grow if you sow. Okay? That's why God says in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8 through 12, it says, will a man rob God? That's a question. That's a question. And then God in return, he says what? Yes, you have robbed me. And then the people ask, how have we robbed you, God? He said, in tithe and in offering. He said, for you are cursed with a curse. Jesus, have mercy. I didn't say it. The Bible says it. So think about your tithe. Think about your giving. Think about the excuses that you might have made. Think about the money that you took and you splurged it. And you said, well, I'm going to do this with my money. I'm going to do that with my money. And then the bottom, has, the bottom has fallen out. And now you need God to come to your rescue. So let's think about that for a minute. You got 30 more seconds. I want you to really think about that. Amen. The Lord said, pause for a minute and think about that. How is your giving? How is your giving? Come on. God loves a cheerful giver. And if your giving is not where it needs to be, that's what you need to start doing. All right. Listen, income tax is over. Some of y'all done, y'all done splurge our refund. So that, that's, that's a wrap. <laughs> And I teach my church, listen, when you get your income tax, you tithe off of your income tax. Amen. I just shared with you all. Listen, and I made a lot of money doing hair. But when it got to the point of me claiming the money and I had a business, you know, to where I had to be accountable, paying business tax. And, you know, when I got my refund, oh, I tithe off of that. I didn't take away. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, you know, rob God. I didn't say, oh, I know I'm supposed to give 10,000, but I'm only going to give five. I'm just going to, mm -mm. no, I was too afraid because my Bible says the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. See, they getting off on Instagram because when you start talking about giving, people don't like that part, but that's what keeps you blessed. I just shared my testimony. Some of you have vision. Some of you want to start businesses. Some of you, you, you have a business, but now you need your business to grow. Now you need God to breathe upon your business. He's only going to breathe upon your business when you give. God loves a cheerful giver. Come on, you can't expect thousands to come to you in your business and you don't give. Can I tell y'all how faithful God is? Let me share another testimony of how faithful God is. When I came into the travel business, I said, Lord, I only want $10,000. I said, I don't know how you're going to do it. I said, but they telling me I can earn a $500 bonus every single week. That's what they told me, Kashina, right? That's what they told us, right? <laughs> you can earn a $1,000 bonus like every month. I said, okay. Now that's if you work your business. What did I do? I worked my business. And what did God do? He over exceeded the amount that I asked him for. Come on. Let's go a little bit deeper. I said, Lord, we need the land for our new church. I said, God, I want you to do it through surge. <laughs> and the Lord did it. Come on. It's just sitting there. Oh, I'm just waiting. But just know that any time hey, that God has given you a vision for something, 
He gives you a blueprint and he gives you a plan. You can't tell me that God is going to tell you to start a church or open up a church or start a business and you don't have the blueprint. He's going to give you the blueprint. Now, if you do it your way, you're going to mess it up. If you do it your way, you if you do it your way, your way, your way, you're going to mess it up. You got to follow. Hallelujah. <laughs> there it is again. Listen to instructions. You got to follow the blueprint because guess what? There are people in the travel industry that have gone before me and I can learn from them because I don't know. You see? So when it comes to business, when it comes to expansion, when it comes to increase, when it comes to overflow, see, this is, this is something that doesn't come from a nine to five. Can I share another testimony? Here's another testimony. Y'all ready? I worked one job my entire life. <laughs> I take that back too. I take that back. I take that back. Please forgive me. I worked too. You want to know where I work? It was a place called Woolworth. <laughs> and they sold material and stuff like that. Okay? And it was downtown Philadelphia. I worked there for about six months. And then I drove a school bus for almost five years. And I only did that for insurance for my kids. Somebody shout wisdom. Come on. So just because you're making money in one area or you have money coming in, you still have to use wisdom. So I drove a school bus so my kids could have medical insurance. Because I didn't want to pay that out of pocket for business owners medical insurance because it was too high. I said, let me get a part-time job. Got my CDL license. See, I'm going somewhere. Because in order for you to get what it is that you need, you have to prepare for it and you have to do it. So right now I still have my CDL. Every four years I renew it, I still have a CDL license. Okay? I can get in the bus right now and drive a school bus. All right? Did it for a very long time. Okay? Somebody shout back up. <laughs> Come on, somebody shout back up. Y'all not talking to me tonight. Everybody must be asleep. You want to be successful, you have to have a backup plan too. Okay? Because when I moved here, this is what I said, Sister Maisha. I know you're a school bus driver. When I moved here, I said, Lord, you want me to drive a bus? He said, no. I said, well, what you want me to do, God? He said, I'll give you clear instructions. Come on. That's why you got it. Listen, God is not stupid. <laughs> Some of y'all think God is slow. He is not slow. He will give you the best plan. He'll lay it all out for you. You'll be like, wow. God, you just want me to do that step? He said, yes. Then after that step, you do that step. That was easy, God. Yep, I want you to do the next step. Oh, wow, this is real easy. All I got to do is listen to you. Hold on. And he bless you over and over and over. He blesses us to make us a blessing. Come on. He blesses us to make us a blessing. Hallelujah. He Come on. He blesses us to make us a blessing. Catch the revelation. He only blesses us to make us a blessing for somebody else. See that? It's reaping season. What have you sown? What are you going to sow tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Tia. I'm going to pray over your seed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And even those double sevens, you know, that's complete completion. Hallelujah. In other words, that's double completion. Hallelujah. And what that means, amen. And I didn't say 77. The woman of God sold that. I'm sharing that because somebody else needs to grab a hold of that. Somebody needs somebody else needs to grab a hold of that $77 seed. Amen. That's double completion. That means there are some things that she needs God to complete. Hallelujah. In her life. And there's some of you on this live, you need God to complete some things. You need him to, yes, Lord, I hear you. You need him to finalize some things also. Because see, in order for you to open up something new, yes, God, I hear you. It's three of you. The Lord said three of you, the $77 seed. That's what I heard. In order for God, yes, yes, Lord, I hear you. In order for God to open up something new or to complete something or to complete it to start something new, you have to let him close the old door. 
You got to let him close and stop the old way of thinking. So you see tonight, even if 77 is going to do that, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, and it's three of you that need to sow that tonight. Step out on faith, obey God and watch God do it for you. There's no gimmicks here. I don't have nothing up my sleeve. Ain't no tricks over here. Ain't no, we don't do that here. PIPW ministry. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. If God don't say it, I don't say it. Come on. If God, listen, <laughs> but I know what I heard. The Lord said it's three of you. So that $77 seed tonight and watch God do it for you. Amen. Those of you that can get us close. Amen. Um, yes, Lord, I hear you. The Lord said 37. Amen. Those of you that can sow a $37 seed, watch God do it for you. Amen. That seven is completion now. Hallelujah. And three, amen, is the number that represents family. It also rep represents unity. How do we know? Because you have the husband, the wife, and the child. That's three right there. Amen. And whenever there's a three, that means complete also. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that $37 seed, amen. The Lord said those of you that can and those of you that will, trust God. Amen. Trust God and step out on faith and watch the Lord bless you in Jesus name. Listen, I wanted to talk about the four types of soil in closing. And you can find that in Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13. And I'm just going to run through it real quick. I'm not going to read it for the sake of time, but it's going to bless about five of you tonight. Matthew 13, um, one, if we were to read, it would be, uh, verses one all the way through, uh, 23. Amen. And it talks about Jesus and how, amen, the multitudes, amen. It says the multitudes were gathered unto him so that he had went into the ship. Amen. And the whole multitudes had stood on the shore and he had spoke many things to them in parables. And this is what he said. He said, behold, a sower went out to sow. And when he had sown, when he had sowed, some seeds had fell by the wayside. Now, this is the four types of soil, okay? So this is how many of you are going to know where you are also. You, you can only be one, one of the four, all right? So this talks about your heart as well, okay? So you got the four types of soil. So number four, verse four says, and when he had sowed, some of the seeds had fell by the wayside and the fowls, which are the birds, came and devoured them up, all right? So let's stop right there. The first type of soil is the soil by the wayside. That's the soil that is trampled on. Everybody has stepped on. Everybody has walked on. So the Bible says that when the seed, when the sower went to sow the seed, there was no ground for the seed to go into. Jesus have mercy. So it's the seed, it is the, it is the soil that is by the wayside. Okay? And in this soil, um, Instagram is getting ready to go out because my device is getting ready to die. I'm sorry, Instagram. I got like 10% on it, okay? So if we go, I love y'all. Stay with us as long as you can. So you got the one type of soil. That's the soil by the wayside, okay? And that soil, it, it a seed cannot even go inside the dirt. It just stays on the surface. And when the birds come, the birds just come and swoop it up and take it away. It never, it never was planted. It was never planted. Okay, that's the one type of soil. Here's the second type of soil in verse five. Some fell upon stony places where there was not much earth. And forthwith, they sprung up because they had no deepness of the earth. That's the second type of soil. Has a little bit of ground, a little bit of dirt, but not enough to hold that seed. Jesus, have mercy. That's the second type of soil. Somebody check it. Check your heart. Check where your heart is. You either one, two. Now let's go to three. Well, the rest of the rest of the second one. So verse two. And when the sun came up and had scorched the seed, it had scorched it because there was no root. And so they withered away. All right. Now you got seven. Verse seven says, <clears throat> and some had fell upon the thorns and the thorns had sprung up and choked the seed. I was just reading this on the plane. Wow. Wow, Sister Katrina. Wow. Look at God bringing confirmation. She said on the plane, she was reading this. Wow. And some had fell upon the thorns. So now you got the third type of soil. This is the thorny type of soil. <laughs> All right. Now, listen, this is your heart. This also is your heart. Okay. It represents your heart and it represents where you're sowing and how you're sowing. Okay. So the third type of soil is what? It, it the, the thorns come and chokes the seed. 
All right. It chokes it. All right. So where it has no life. Can you imagine your seed being caught up in thorns? It's going to die after a while because it didn't go in the ground to produce anything. Somebody shout, I ain't one. I'm not soil number two. And I'm surely not soil number three. Come on. We're the soil number four. Here's four right here. But others have fell on good ground. Somebody shout, I'm good ground. Come on. Somebody shout, I am good ground. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. This is verse eight. Somebody shout, I'm good ground. But some fell on good ground and brought forth fruit. My Lord, I can stop right there and take a lap around my house. Listen, and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Come on. Come on. So the, the good the good ground, which is the type of soil that we need to plant on, and the type of soil that we need to have. Come on. And this type of soil, it produces some thirty fold some 60 fold and some 100 fold amen and i prophesied tonight in the name of jesus those of you that have already sown and those of you that are getting ready to sow your seed that you will receive a hundred fold blessing in return for your obedience unto god not 30 not 60 but i speak as god's prophet that you receive a hundred fold blessing over your seed on tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word on tonight. Yes, Lord. We thank God for the moving of his spirit. We thank God that it is reaping season. Amen. And those of you that got seed in the ground, guess what? You are about to be abundantly blessed by the Lord. And as my apostle would always say, glory to God. He would say seed. No, I'm sorry. He would say rain only matters to those who have seed in the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So because it's, it's reaping season, amen, when the rain falls, it's all right. Hallelujah. Sister Tia, it's all right. Because what's happening is your seed is going down deeper, amen, when the rain comes. Ah, hallelujah. Sometimes we complain about rain, but you know what? In the natural, I see, I see you hitting those hearts and those thumbs up, uh, Minister Hattie. But sometimes she said, what the name to see? Amen. Um, whatever God gives you. The Lord didn't give me a, a name for the seed. Amen. He gave me 77 and he gave me 37, Sister Katrina. And he says 77 was for, amen, um, double completion. Amen. He's going to complete some things as he's closing doors to the old to open up the new. Amen. And then he gave me 37. Amen. For those who could not sow the 77. So that's what God gave me. Amen. Hallelujah. And unity for the 37, unity and completion, unity and completion for the $37 seed. Amen. And so um, when the rain comes, amen, rain, what it does is it puts, it puts your seed deeper into the, into the soil. So we complain sometimes when it rains, but years ago, the Lord spoke to me and he said, daughter, you need the rain. He said, you need the rain. He said, you need the rain. Hallelujah. You need the rain. You need water. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Water also represents life as well. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Rejuvenation and refreshing. Hallelujah. So we need water. Amen. We need the rain. Hallelujah. To rain on our seeds. Amen. So that it can produce an abundant harvest. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Lord, send the rain. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Send the rain, oh God. So that it can rain upon every seed that I have sown. Hallelujah. Everything that I have done unto you, God. Every good deed. Hallelujah. And everything that I have obeyed you with, Father. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Everything that I have done that was pleasing in your sight, oh God. Rain on it. Hallelujah. Rain upon it. In Jesus' name. Rain on it, God. Because it is reaping season. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. And as God to check, amen, the soil, amen, make sure, glory to God, amen, there's the second one with the $77 seed, there's one more person, the Lord said there's three, the Lord said there's three of you, God bless you, Sister Katrina, I'm going to pray, pray over every seed in just a minute, amen, there's one more person, amen, that's sowing the seed of 77, everybody else, amen, make sure you sow that seed of 37, in Jesus' name, amen. If you don't have the 37, wait till you get the 37. Amen, but don't say you don't have it. <laughs> amen, don't say you don't have it. And those of you that do have it, watch God. Release it and watch God. 
Amen. Release it and watch God. Listen, we have three seats left for our women's conference. Only three. God bless you, Minister Adam. We have three seats left for our women's conference. That's it. That's it. Three seats are left. Ooh, and I'm ready to just close the registration out. I am. We have two vending tables left as well. So those of you that have businesses, I had two ladies reach out today, but they didn't pay for their table. So we still got two tables left. All right. So with that being said, if you have a business, let me know what business you have. We already have jewelry. We got paparazzi jewelry. We got another type of jewelry. Amen. We got catering businesses coming. We got a sweet tables. We got a little bit of everything. Amen. A little bit of everything. Glory to God. There's the third one. Amen. Thank you for your obedience, Sister Kashina. Watch God do it for you. Watch God do it for you. And this is the great time too, Kashina, because God needs to close those doors so that you can be ushered into your new, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, I know you caught that. You caught that and you obey God and watch God do it. It's going to happen sooner than you think in Jesus' mighty name. And I hear the Lord. Yes, God, I hear you. I hear the Lord saying to tell you, Kashina, even in your obedience and sowing, the Lord, hey, Shatan Dabaha, God says it's going to be an easy transition. It's going to be a smooth transition. It's going to be smooth. It's going to be smooth. I just landed, so I'm going to have to go back and watch the replay. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that you landed safely. Amen. I'm glad that you made it safely. Amen to your destination. I'm so glad. Amen. In Jesus' name. Um, the Lord says, Kashina, is going to be a smooth transition. It's going to be very smooth for you. Hold on to that word. Hold on to that word in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are going to sow that 37? Amen. She said that that's confirmation. We bless God. Amen. You know, he's always speaking. Amen. Hallelujah. Especially when you're faithful. Amen. When you're faithful, God is always speaking. Ooh, hallelujah. How many of you are going to sow that 37? Amen. Get your, get your seed of 37 in the ground. Amen. I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Over every seed that has been sown. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Once again, we got three seats left for our women's conference. If you want them, register tonight. You can register on Cash App, which is PayPal. I'm sorry, Cash App, which is PayPal. Cash App, which is P-I-P-W Ministry, paypal.me slash prophetic impact. And we also have our ministry's website. If you go to the website and you click on shop, if you go to the website and click on shop, you will see there... Amen. Thank you, Minister Hattie. Um, you will see there is um, our ministry products. We also have counseling. I do prophetic counseling, which is a one-hour session with you and I and, of course, the Holy Spirit. Um, you'll see that there. Um, you'll also see our blessed anointed oil, amen, which is the large bottle, which is here. I just um, actually uh, prepared some more oil. So those of you that need your blessed anointed oil, small bottle, large bottle, get your blessed anointed oil. Get it, get it, get it. All right. You'll see this on the website as well. When you click on shop, uh, what else do we have? We have our prayer shawls and we have a beautiful, beautiful teal color. Can I show you all the teal color? Let me show you the beautiful teal color. I only have two. I got two of them. Okay. Y'all bear with me for one second. I got two of these, all right? This is the green. It's like a teal color. Isn't that pretty? Oh, my goodness. I would pull it out the pack, but mm -mm, not yet. <laughs> this is pretty right here. I like this one. Yes. So I have two of these, all right? And they're only $50, okay? If you're in North Carolina or if you're close to our church, just say, Apostle, I'll be in church Sunday, and I want this prayer shop, okay? I got you. All right. We have this. We also have them in purple, white, and gold. We have pink, white, and gold. And we have the blue, white, and gold. All right. But we have the four colors. Okay. So, yes, you can purchase your prayer shawls. You like this one, Kashina? Yes. Yes. Isn't it pretty? I have two. All right. I have two of these, but it's going to be anointed. All right. It's going to be anointed. I'm going to pray over it for seven days. Um, I think I'm going to pray over these probably starting tomorrow. So even those who get the prayer shawls, they'll already be prayed over and anointed. Okay. But um, they're only $50. So go to the website, uh, www.propheticimpact1000.com. Click, click on shop and you'll see the blessed anointed oil. You'll see the counseling. You'll see our ministry t-shirt. We also have ministry mask um, that you can wear. Those of you that are still wearing masks. We also have our bundle package, which is $30. We have not increased it, even though it costs us like $30 for the, for the products itself. Um, we don't make no commission or, or anything, no profit off of the bundle package. It's kind of like a gift, you know, to you. We need to raise it to about $45 to be honest, but 
We still got the bundle package at $30. So take advantage of it. All right. Take advantage of the bundle package. You'll get a prayer journal as well as a ministry pen. Um, and um, you'll get a small bottle of blessed anointed oil. Amen. So you'll get this here. All right. And you will also get a ministry pen. Let me see if I have a fresh fire pen over here. Um, I don't think I do. I think it's in my bookcase, in my Bible case. Yep. But let's just use this one. This is our Women of Virtue pen. Y'all see that? That's our Women of Virtue pen. Yes, we're getting ready for our Women of Virtue conference. All right. So you would get a ministry pen. You would get a prayer journal as well as a small bottle of blessed anointed oil. <laughs> I get excited. I get excited because you know what? These products are so anointed. And it's not because, you know, I pray over them or... This is my ministry or anything like that. But the testimonies, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know, our sister Kamaya has a beautiful testimony of how she's been writing in her journal and how God has been healing her. I don't know if she's on the live. I can't tell her story the way she can, but I mean, it's just a blessing. You know, Minister Tanya, I believe she just purchased another prayer journal. She filled up the other one. Amen. And so, you know, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. I mean, th these are anointed products. I can't. That's all I can say. The anointed products, blessed anointed oil, prayer journal, you get the pen, you know, and so it's only $30. So go ahead and purchase it. They make beautiful birthday gifts too. Birthday gifts, Christmas gifts. Oh my goodness. I mean, just be a blessing, you know, to somebody else and, you know, get them the bundle package or for yourself. Amen. So with that being said, we're going to conclude. I'm going to pray. Amen. I'm going to pray us out and I'm going to pray over every seed. That has been sown out of obedience unto God. Amen. God already honors your seed. Amen. But I'm just going to pray another blessing over your seed. Hallelujah. That whatever you have named your seed, that the Father would do it quickly. I'm believing God to bless you quickly, people of God, within 24 hours. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to give God praise in advance for your blessing, for your miracle. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your release. Hallelujah. That God. God would do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think, but it's according to the power that worketh in you. Glory to God. And by you sowing tonight by faith mm, and believe in God, I share my testimony. Amen. How I have sown in faith. Oh my goodness. And how God has opened doors. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just got to give him praise. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, hey, Shatanda Baha, hallelujah. Listen, every house that I had, God bless it. Every vehicle I had, oh, Sheke, Yanamasike, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, my children got full scholarships. Do you hear me? Because of my giving. I'm trying to get off this live and my voice is leaving me, as y'all can hear. But my, my oldest son got a full scholarship. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm just testifying. That's all. I'm, I'm lifting up Jesus right here because y'all don't understand. Out of my obedience, God has given my oldest son a $41,000 scholarship. Now, he you know, messed it up. He was in college for about a year and a half. But that's nevertheless. God did it. Amen. My son came home. I never forget. I never forget. I never forget the year before he graduated. He was like, Mom, I want to go to college. And I was like, I don't have any money. I said, AJ, I don't have no money. I said, you know, <laughs> I don't have no money for college. I said, I don't know how you're going to do it. And I knew it was God because my son got an academic scholarship. And he was a class clown. Okay. <laughs> Anybody that know my oldest son, AJ, he played too much. Okay. He played so much in school that he got in trouble. <laughs> so academic, academically, no. That was all God. My son got a full scholarship. Now, that wasn't just for the whole four years. That was every single year, $41,000. And LaSalle was the college that he um, got accepted to. He got accepted to 22 colleges, rather. He picked LaSalle University. And LaSalle's tuition, I think, was like maybe $30,000 for him to stay on campus. And so he, he still had money left. He still had money left over. He had $11,000 left over. Amen. After we paid for that first uh, year, you understand? So that's how scholarships work. And God did it. God bless you, Sister Tia. Amen. God did it. I'm sharing this with you all because your faith got to come up higher. Your faith has to come up higher. If God did it for me, he's more than able to do it for you all. Listen, God is no respecter of person. It, 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 there's nothing special about me. 
Amen. Listen, let me just encourage you all. There's nothing special about me. I just learned to obey God. That's it. My children obey God. Amen. Now, they might do some things they ain't got no business doing, my oldest children, but they know when it's time for a blessing or a miracle, they know how to be obedient and they know how to sow. I taught my children that. Amen. Even my two youngest children, they give every single Sunday. My Sabrina gave her allowance, okay, <laughs> into the church Sunday. And I didn't ask her to do that. She did it. Amen. She came over to me. She said, Mommy, can I get my allowance? I said, you really want to give your allowance? She said, yes, I want to give my allowance into the church offering. I said, okay. Amen. So, you know, I teach my children to give. I don't, you know, I'm not saying this just so you all can sow and you all can give. Listen, God's going to meet the need. If there's ever a need in the ministry, he's going to meet it. If he has to send somebody from the outside, <laughs> I can share another testimony on that, but I'm going to bring it on in. I'm going to bring it on in. If God has to send somebody on the outside, he'll do it. He's done it. Amen. But I tell the saints, don't miss your blessing. I tell them, listen, why, why would you let, <laughs> why would you let somebody from the outside come to your ministry? This is your ministry. You supposed to sow and give here because you're being fed here. Why would you let somebody on the outside come and get your blessing? Something wrong? <laughs> you you don't you don't let nobody come and snatch what's yours. This is your this is your place. This is where you. But I did ask God to send new souls. I did about four months ago. I said, Lord, send new souls. Send new people to the Facebook Live. And when we had our prayer line, I said, God, send new souls to the prayer line. So I did ask God to do it, and he did it. Amen. So, you know, with that being said, as my prophetic teacher would say, if you can sow there, then you can go there. <laughs> Amen. Listen, if you can give out of the abundance of your heart, if you can give to God abundantly, he's going to give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Father, in the name of Jesus, with hands lifted in the air, Father, we thank you. Father God, we glorify you. Lord, I just take this time to bless your holy name right now, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, I just say thank you for all that you have done on this evening, oh God, this morning, Father. Thank you for blessing your people once again, oh God. Thank you for prophetic surge empowerment tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for breathing upon us once again, oh God. Mm, hallelujah. Speaking unto your people and encouraging them, Father. For this, I say thank you. Father, I thank you for pulling them out of the pit. I thank you for those that you pulled out of a dark place tonight in the name of Jesus. And Father, they're able to walk. They're able to live. They're able to move. Hallelujah. They're able to grow. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So Father, I say thank you even now for all that you have said and done, Lord God. Thank you that it's reaping season, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for speaking a word of confirmation to your people in the name of Jesus. Those that came on the live, those that came and left, oh God, even those that are still here. Father, I say thank you right now, God. Mm, hallelujah for what you have done in this place, in this atmosphere, in the name of Jesus on YouTube, oh God, Instagram, in the name of Jesus on Facebook Live, each and every person under the sound of my voice. Father, for this we say thank you. Father God, we say thank you. We cannot praise you enough, oh God, for you are moving mightily by your spirit in the earth realm. And Father, we just bless your holy name for the revival that's getting ready to hit this earth, oh God, for you are preparing your people, oh God, hallelujah, to remain servants and to remain humble at your feet in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Your word even says, God, Hallelujah. In due time, you will exalt your people. Yes, Lord. In due season, you will exalt your people. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, that we would just remain in a humble place and we would just remain teachable, Father. If we would just remain, hallelujah, in the realm of the spirit, oh God, you will continue to speak to us. You will continue to use us for your glory, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Oh, God, touch your people even the more, God. Oh, God, let them see that there is a harvest, oh, God, that you have before them. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, God, help them even now to stop holding back on you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, even like the man that was at the side of the pool of Bethesda, yes, Lord. Oh, God, he couldn't see his healing. Ah, hallelujah for all those years he stayed bound. Oh, God, help your people to see the increase and the overflow that you have 
have for them, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, help your people to see the new houses, see the new car, and to see the new business, my God, that you have for them, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Help your people, hallelujah, oh God, to increase in their faith even now. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes, Lord. Oh God, you honor the faith the size of the mustard seed, but God, you're looking for exuberant faith, hallelujah. You're looking for unshakable faith. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah. Help your people to come out of a mindset of poverty. Ah, In the name of Jesus. And help them to come out of the spirit of lack. Oh my God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. That they can see. Hallelujah. The overflow and the abundance. Oh God. You said in your word that you own a cattle on a thousand hills. My God. Everything belongs to you, Father God. In the mighty mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Father, we thank you that you own everything. Oh God, you are greater than any bank. In the name of Jesus, you are greater. Hallelujah. Than any institution. Oh God, financial institution. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. So, Father, I pray that you bless your people, oh God. We come against oppression and oppression and suicidal thoughts. Mm. Hey, in the mighty name of Jesus, yes, God. Oh God, I come against oppression right now. In the name of Jesus, be loose, be free. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes, Lord. I come against every mental disorder. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus, I come against, hey, Shatan Baha. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Schizophrenia, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, my God, I come against every form of mental disorders in the name of Jesus, my Lord. I come against ODD and ADD, ADHD in the name of Jesus, my God. In the name of Jesus, I come against anxiety right now. I bound the works of the enemy concerning your people, oh God, and even those that are struggling even now to rest. Huh? I speak rest over their spirit. I speak rest over their heart. I speak rest over their mind in the mighty name of Jesus that they will rest in you, oh God. And this word tonight will rest in their heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And when they awaken in the morning, oh God, when you awaken them, let them be refreshed. Let them be renewed. Let them be revived in Jesus' mighty name. And let them know this is a new beginning, oh God, for it is our reaping season. Everything we have sown, hallelujah, we we shall receive the blessing in the name of Jesus. And Lord, if we have sown bad, oh my God, it's coming back bad. But Lord, we thank you now that you're reversing it in the name of Jesus. And you're giving your people another opportunity to get it right. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we thank you for all these blessings. We thank you even now for what you have done. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints. PIPW Ministry, have a wonderful, wonderful night. Those of you that are connected to us, have a wonderful night. Shalom and shalom. God bless you. Love you all. God bless. Hallelujah.